afternoon, welcome back to Innsbruck. Everybody in the arena has had a couple of minutes to catch their breath. And we are underway with the men's combined final here. We've just seen Jan Jagarnbrett, Karan, combined champion here in Innsbruck. Now it is the turn of six men to try and repeat that feat. Half of them are Japanese, Kai Harada, Tomoe Narasaki and Kokoro Fujian. They'll be joined in the final by three Europeans, Jakob Schubert, Adam Ondra and Jan Hoyer. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here to talk you through the final. We've got three disciplines that make up a combined final. We've got speed, followed by bouldering, followed by lead. The way the scores work is that you receive a ranking of one to six for each discipline. So if, for example, you are second in the speed, you are third in the bouldering and first in the lead, your overall score is two for your second in the speed, multiplied by three for your third in the bouldering, multiplied by one for your first in the lead, with giving you a grand total of six. Minimum possible score would be one, because it would you'd be first in all three disciplines, one by one by one would be a total of one. And the maximum you could get is 216 if you're sixth on every discipline. Now having the athletes presented to the crowd, over on the women's side, we had a few climbers who were uh, clocking increasingly good times on the speed wall. Over on the men's side, the majority of these finalists, whilst not speed specialists, are very, very quick. So. Someone described it to me on the women's side. They're all kind of competing to be the least bad on the speed. On the men's side, some very strong speed climbers in here, including that man, Tomoe Narasaki. Yeah, Tomoe Narasaki. Check his Instagram out and see how quick he is around the wall. Jakob Schubert obviously been training the speed quite a lot as well. There's a recent video of him training in the uh, big gym here in Innsbruck, the National Austrian Training Centre. There's Kai Harada. Yeah, just about wiped away the tears after last night's podium ceremony here in Mark Platz. He was in tears on the mats for a good half an hour or so, and rightly so. Such an emotional guy. And then for the podium ceremony, well, Jan Hoyer just going through his routine one more time. He was just uh, almost laughing there because we were saying earlier you don't need to observe the speed route, but sometimes just going through your, your sort of routine with your arm, you see a lot of with the speed climbers backstage, they have to just try and get the, the muscles firing in the exact right sequence. If you're watching climbing for the first time, welcome. This is speed climbing, the first of the three disciplines, 15 metre high wall, six metres wide that overhangs by five degrees. And this is a route that all the climbers know and practice on. They know the route off by heart. However, you can always find a way to go a bit quicker. And there we see the current world record standing at 5.48 we're not expecting anyone to get probably within a second of that might be the fastest we'll get but it's not about breaking world records and uh, in a final it's about beating the person next to you so we will have three races first up tomorrow Narasaki against Jakob Schubert then Jan Hoyer against Adam Ondra then Kokora Fuji against Kai Harada from those three races the three winners will progress and also the fastest loser so after this three races we're going to lose two climbers. Four will progress to the semi-finals. They'll then race off for a place in the big final, which determines who's ranked first and who's ranked second. And the runners up in the semi-finals will race off for third and fourth place. Seven races in total. There's Jakob Schubert. Only just missed out on the bouldering semi-finals uh, yesterday. Uh, on the bouldering finals yesterday and uh, having competed in the finals. Same is true of that man there, Tomoe Narasaki. Jakob, lead world champion. What a moment that was in front of his home city crowd. And Tomoe Narasaki, the 2016 boulder world champion. So, Jakob on the right, to Moa on the left. Winner goes through, runner-up may still go through depending on the time. We want the 
fastest loser from the three races to also progress. 6.70 from Tomoa in the qualifying round and to a 7.88 from Jakob. Tomoa on the left and he falls starts. The fastest man for the qualifiers. Tomoa Narasaki is false started. And Jakob Schubert will go through. High drama within the first second of the men's combined. Tomoa Narasaki, like you said, Charlie, the favourite is out without even moving off of the floor. Well, the problem was he moved off the floor a bit earlier than he should have done. It's perhaps not the favourite for the uh, combined overall. In fact, it could well be, but he was certainly the favourite in the speed, generally considered to be the fastest of the six climbers here on the speed wall. He's one of the very fastest non-specialist speed climbers. False starts against Jakob Schubert. Yeah, a bit disappointing, really. It would have been really nice to see him on the wall, see what he could put down in this combined competition. And whilst he's fast to I have to say, that suggests a lack of experience in competition because he's racing against someone who he knows He's basically a second quicker than. He doesn't need to risk a full start. He doesn't need to go up full tilt. He just needs a nice, steady, clean run. And he could have been almost certain that he would have beaten Jakob had he delivered that. As it was, he fired out the blocks, full started. Tomoa Narasaki out already in the speed climbing. He's going to be ranked fifth or sixth. And this is a clash of the titans. Who would have thought we'll be seeing Adam Andre versus Jan Hoyer in the spotlights on a speed wall a few years ago? The yeah. Olympics is beckoning. The Olympics is beckoning. Yeah, as you say, Jan Hoy against Adam Andre. And speed climbing were words you would not imagine putting in the same sentence. But here we are. Jan Hoyer came through the 7.08. Again, one of the very quick non-specialists. Adam came through the 9.32. So Jan on the left. You would expect to take this one. Still got a pretty good start, though. Jan didn't really need to go at full tilt. It doesn't look as if he's quite given the route everything, but still clocking a pretty respectable 8.34. Yeah, we'll see that again, but you see Jan Hoyer, he did delay off the start. He didn't make a Tomoa mistake, just delayed it. He knew he was going to be quick, and interestingly, if you've got really good eyesight, you'll see that Adam Andre used a slightly different sequence at the bottom of the route. And sort of like a three points on one of the holds. Hopefully, we get to see the whole run again. Check Adam Andre out on the right-hand side. It's a slightly different sequence lower down. We've already missed it. Jan Hoyle was looking really clean all the way up. Yeah, he wasn't going at full pace, uh, Jan. That's almost uh, a second and a half of his qualifying time. And that's a little smarter than what we saw from Tomoa. And he understood who his opponent was, Adam Ondra, possibly the greatest rock climber of all time. But he's no speed climber, Adam. And Jan just need what need, did what was needed. Excuse me, Mike Langley and I uh, live for... A very long but thoroughly enjoyable women's combined final for most of today, and now we're back with the men's. Kokora Fuji now takes on Kai Harada. Now, Kai Harada, I just looked at my watch to calculate how many hours ago, less than 20 hours ago, was being crowned Boulder World Champion. He then went to the Mark Platz in Innsbruck City Centre, had a fabulous podium ceremony, which you and I went along for. Yeah, it was brilliant scenes down there, a massive crowd, and by all Stretch the imagination, a ginormous party kicked off in Innsbruck last night for Kai Harada, plus the silver medalists and the bronze medalists, Gregor Vazonek especially enjoying himself, John Monchon doing his dad dance moves on the podium as well. John Monchon's dad dance moves, wow. It's special. I mean, I, if I'm in a position to criticise your dancing, things are bad. Let's just put it that way, but that was terrible. But anyway, it was Kai Harada on top of the podium, and somehow he's 19 hours later, he's got to go through a marathon of climbing. Here he is now on the right. Kokora Fuji's on the left. I thought we had a full start, but no, we have a clean start from both. And Kokora Fuji is almost certainly going to take this one, but he stalled at two thirds height. Stalled again and recovered to take it in 8.90, 9.28. That was a good little speed race, actually. Kai. Yeah, good speed race. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, both climbers had a moment. Kai slipped at the start. Kokura was going really well and completely missed his footstep halfway up. Let's have another look. Neck and neck at the beginning. There's Kai slip. Have a Kuro's slip comes there. His right foot went way out to the right. Didn't know where that was going for a second. Slight lack of experience and a slip at the top as well when he got a bit nervous that Kai was coming up behind him. So Kai Harada will go through as the fastest loser, 9.28. Adam Ondra got a 9.61 and Samoa Narasaki full started. So Adam Ondra, although we, uh, as I've said a few times, we're not used to seeing him on the speed wall, it was only about four tenths of a second off going through to the semi-finals, albeit from a starting 
grid of six. But we saw in the women's event, the whole thing basically got turned on its head from what we were expecting because of the speed early on. So it's going to be Jakob Schubert against Kai Harada and then Jan Hoyer against Kokora Fuji. Tomorrow Narasaki is going to be ranked sixth and Adam Ondra is going to be fifth coming off the speed wall. So and we saw it with Yanya Garnbrit. She went through after the speed in fifth and still managed to take away the overall win. So all is not lost for Ondra. There you can see Tomorrow's false start. He couldn't quite believe it himself. Jakob Schubert has not done more than two meters of climbing so far. This is just some replays of what went down on the first runs. Two of the biggest guys in climbing going head to head on that run. Seem to enjoy themselves. I think Andre's just pleased to get to the top, to be honest. I think Adam Andre is pleased not to be sick. Yeah, I mean, it's not in any way a criticism of him. I think he's the, uh, the best outdoor climber that's ever lived, but he is not a speed climber. And to not come sixth, it's actually, a, a, strange as it might sound, not a bad result. He's not been training speed that long, and he's going to finish fifth. What, one uh, very interesting element of this is when you look down our start list, Tomoe Narasaki, Jakob Schubert, Jan Hoyer, Adam Ondra, Kokoro Fuji, Kai Harada, they can all do bouldering and lead very, very well. There's no one we'd say, yeah, he's a boulderer. Admittedly, someone like Jan Hoyer, we think of him more as a boulderer, but he's been in lead finals before. Jakob Schubert's won World Cups in both disciplines. Adam Ondra's won World Championships in both disciplines. Kai Harada's a boulder world champion but he's also been going really well in the lead World Cups. So, yeah, one thing that does do, you can have a look, is it does, in many ways, when the Olympic format was announced, it does isolate the speed specialists. Obviously, they've got any opportunity as equal as anybody else to train the other disciplines, but lead and boulder do go a lot more hand in hand than speed does with any of the other disciplines. It's a lot easier to make up ground training speed from nothing than training lead or boulder yeah. because you can learn the route it's not just it's not quite so much physical strength required so Ooh. much it's cerebral that you can learn it quite quickly <laughs> semi-finals underway Jakob Schubert on the left Kai Harada the recently crowned boulder world champion on the right Jakob Schubert the lead world champion on the left it's very tight and it's Jakob who takes it 7.54 I have to say I'm absolutely gobsmacked to see the green light come above Back on Schubert's name there, he didn't have that at all, all the way up, Kai Harada was the best. It would be fascinating to see that again, so, so close. Eight hundredths, I think it was, in the end. Let's have another look, this is a brilliant race, this is speed climbing at his very best. Both climbers, clean runs all the way up, Jakob Schubert in the top third started really powering it, and it was just a touch on the buzzer, 7.62 on the right. Don't you love it how sport works sometimes? The Innsbruck 2018 lead world champion on the left against the Innsbruck 2018 boulder champion on the right on a speed wall, and there's a tenth of a second in it. Yeah, tip of the hat to the root setters. Uh, not the root <laughs> Long day, excuse me. <laughs> Being a root setter with speed was not difficult. Tip of the hat to the climbers for adopting the lead speed and boulder format and getting on with it and, and performing really, really well. Like that was proper speed climbing. It was. That's uh, give me some idea. The men's world record 5.48, the women's 7.32. So these climbers, although they're not speed specialists, and we've said it repeatedly, they're by no means slow on the speed wall either. This is Jan Hoyer now on the left, closest to the camera as we currently look at it, and then Kokora Fuji on the right. Both of these climbers, very, very serious boulders, and pretty handy on a lead wall as well. I have to say, of all the athletes who are gunning for this combined, for me, Jan Hoyer is taking this the most seriously. He wants this, no doubt about it. Yeah, if athletes complain about having to train speed, you can just say, well, the rules are the same for everyone. Jan Hoyer, as you say, he's been training the speed well, but he just had a little stumble down there on the left, and Kokora Fuji's been much cleaner, but then slipped right at the top. 7.14 for Jan Hoyer. Kokora Fuji repeats Kai Harada's trick on the right-hand lane there. 
both the Japanese athletes were going really well on the right hand side and somehow the climber on the left claws it back to, and gets the green light above the name. 7.14 for Jan Hoyer is another great race. Mike, as you said, Jan Hoyer's really got into the training for combined. Whenever people have said to me, well, I don't like the speed climbing, blah, 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 just say, well, them's the rules. You want to be in the Olympics, you've got to do all three. So either train them or stop complaining. And Jan Hoyer, no complaints from him. I think he really enjoys his speed climbing. Whenever I chat to him, he seems very enthused by it. And uh, when you enjoy something, you tend to get good at it. And he's getting very good, 7.14. That top foothold, the final move for Kokoro there. He had it in the bag all the way up to that point. You can see on the replay from Jan Hoyer, he couldn't quite believe it because he knew he was, all the, he was behind until the final move. But he had the better consistency on the route. No mistakes at all. And there you see it. Schubert and Jan Hoyer go through. Japan play off third and fourth. If you've been watching the IFSC uh, for a long time, just sit down somewhere because I'm about to say that Jan Hoyer and Jakob Schubert are facing off in a speed climbing final. It's not a situation that we've seen before, but such is the nature of the Olympic format combined, and those two have really embraced it. And quick times from both. Jakob a smidgen over seven and a half seconds, and that's 7.1 for Jan Hoyer. So Kai Harada's going to be third in the speed, uh, sorry, will race for third in the speed climbing against Kokoro Fuji. This is a replay of Jan Hoyer against Kokoro. And Kokoro had it. Jan had a couple of quite minor stumbles, that being one of them, and then Kokoro completely missed with the left foot at the end. I think it's with the speed, you can't leave anything to chance, really. You just have to give it everything you've got and hope for the best. The chance of making a mistake, percentage chance of making a mistake, is so high, you just have to accept that that is part of the game. I think as well it's easy to aim for the buzzer and you're not at the buzzer until you've done the last move and if you start thinking about that buzzer as perhaps Kora Fuji did before you do the last move you can fluff your lines and you just slip with the left foot so here is the small final this is the competition to be ranked third coming out of the speed climbing <laughs> it's uh, gives an insight into what good friends they are Jan Hoyer and Jakob Schubert, we've just seen a shot of them on the big screen here, a backstage comparing notes, they're about to race in the big final. And uh, it's all Japan in the small final, Kai Harada and Kokoro Fuji. Climbers will take their compulsory rest now. Kokoro has literally just come off the wall, we saw it with Petra in the small final earlier on. They need to have a compulsory rest period before they come back out and race again. So much power in involved in speed climbing. You do need to just let the uh, tank refuel very briefly before coming back out. There is Kokoro ready at the doorway. There is Kokoro Fuji. Took part in the bouldering final uh, last night without taking home a medal. Kairada took part in the bouldering final last night and won it. I can't believe that um, fatigue is not going to be an issue. Both these climbers yesterday did a bouldering semi-final, then a bouldering final that finished at half past nine at night, and then went to the Markplatz. Kai Harada will have got the biggest shot of adrenaline of his life at about quarter to ten when he got presented with his medal. And now they've got to do a speed final, a bouldering final, and a lead route. I, I can't believe that fatigue is not going to be a huge issue, and that's something that in the Olympics we won't have to quite the same extent. Ready? Kai Arada now on the left, Kokoro Fuji on the right. All Japan in the small final. Looked like a possible false start for Kokoro, which is a very fast start, and he's fast through the middle section as well. Just needs to get that last move sorted, and does. 7.23 for him. Kokoro went again on the right hand. He was on that just a second ago. Doesn't slip this time. He did slip against Jan Hoyer, but Kokoro Fuji, you have to say, looks like a, a very talented speed climber. He's obviously been training it hard. His technique is great. He just missed the foothold right at the bottom there. Just a left foot slip. Didn't seem to fade so much. Got back into his routine, which is so difficult to do when you have a slip. And then just started nailing it all the way to the top. It was a quick run in the end. 7.23 for Kokoro. He'll be pleased with that. I think he is one to watch in the speed in the future.
as I alluded to earlier, because so much of the speed is technique, cerebral, it's studying the route, micro-analyzing your technique, a huge amount of getting faster is just doing it more and studying it more. So if you have time, you can get quicker. The tricky thing about training combined, though, is how much time do you want to put into the speed compared to how much time you need to train for boulder and lead. But the thing is, when we get to the Olympics, if you really are off the pace and the speed, you could be playing catch-up and you're basically backing yourself to either win or come second, maybe third, on the remaining two disciplines. It's a big ask. I think uh, anybody that's underestimating the importance of speed will see the error of their ways as we have more and more of these combined competitions. Look at the faces of these guys. Both these guys want it badly. Great drama here so far. Men's combined. So, Yakov on the left, Jan on the right. Clean start from both, and it's Jan who's opened up a bit of an advantage, and Jakob slips, he slips again. Jan is going to take this one in 7.69. Unfortunate for Jakob, but he had to go and give it 110% realistically to beat Jan Hoyer. He yeah. is the slower qualifier coming into the speed final. Jan Hoyer was the favorite in that race realistically. So Jakob Schubert had to go all out. And when you go all out on the speed, the chances of having a slip are very high. Yeah, I think um, on average, you'd say Jan Hoy is a good half a second quicker on, on the speed wall. So Jakob Yu, he needed the performance of his lifetime. And ideally, whilst he wouldn't wish ill on his good friend Jan Hoy, he could have done with Jan having a little slip somewhere on the route. But uh, Jan brings it home. Given that Jan is a multiple Boulder World Cup winner, a former Boulder, World Cup overall champion. First place in the speed is a pretty amazing start and he's going to take some catching because we've got his favorite discipline coming up next. Yeah, and he didn't make the boulder final, so he's had that extra day's rest as well. Yeah, I mean, remember we had the, the semi-final yesterday, we'd agreed he was finished at, what, three o'clock and Kai and uh, Kokoro were finished at nine o'clock. So he was climbing yesterday, Jan, but an awful lot less. Team Germany pretty happy with that one. So there we can see it. Jan Hoyer ranked first in the speed. Jakob Schubert second. Yeah, Jan Hoyer did put down the quickest time of the entire event there, so well-deserved winner. 7.14 in one of his earlier rounds, his second race against Kokoro. Good times for Jan, only last year he was just about getting under eight seconds. So I think that progress he's going to be pretty, pretty pleased with. He's been entering the speed for quite a while now. Slowly improving, taking a couple of years to improve his craft. So up next, we'll have observation for the boulder and the climbers just have a statutory rest period, however, but they won't have long and they'll be out onto the boulder wall. It's, it felt like a marathon for the women and the, the men are just getting it underway. Just to let you know, uh, while we were off air as we watched some replays, Climbers Against Cancer made a 25,000 sterling donation to the Tyrolean Cancer Research Institute. Climbers Against Cancer, of course, founded by the much-loved and much-missed John Ellison. And uh, they've got two more donations planned in 2018, having already made two so far. So. Uh, Sadly, because we have the uh, commercials on Austrian TV, we didn't see that donation live. But a big shout out to Climbers Against Cancer, and we never make any apologies for plugging them. Yeah, I would say if you want to get involved in Climbers Against Cancer, you can get onto the website, buy yourself a t-shirt, buy yourself a hoodie. All the proceeds go to directly to the chosen charities of Climbers Against Cancer. Climbersagainstcancer.org if you do want to pick up a t-shirt, and you should. So let's have a look, a look at Jan. Can't see uh, which race this was. I think he was on the right in the final, so certainly not his last run. Yeah, this might have been his 7.14. I think he can improve on that as well. There's a slight hesitation. Oh, this was 8.34, one of his very early races, actually. Yeah, it wasn't one of his quickest, but he still got it done. 8.34 at that time, he would have been a bit disappointed with that because he could go over a quicker, one second quicker. You can see on the big screen, this is what everybody in the audience can see. Boulder wall there in the camouflage lights and the climbers are making their way onto the stage for the boulder observation. Just like that, speed is done and we 
we move on to the bouldering, the order of the climbers, the order in which they come out gets recalibrated after the speed. Kuro, who will be out first when it comes to the bouldering. Followed by Adam Andre. Yeah, and Hoyer still having a trying to get a bite to eat in there. Such is the nature of this format. Yeah, a little insight actually, thinking ahead to the Olympics, of how quickly the Olympics could get away from you if you're not careful. We got underway here by my watch 23 minutes ago. The speed is done and we're on the bouldering. So, like we saw in Adam Andre, with Adam Andre, for example, in the bouldering semi finals yesterday, fluffed his lines on boulder number one and then his semi-final was over. The Olympics, it would seem from looking at uh, what we've seen today, could be over almost before it's good. You, you could be 25 minutes into the Olympic final and have put yourself in a very uncomfortable position. That said, uh, Yanya Garnbrett was fifth in the speed and ended up winning the overall, but, uh, well, that's Yanya Garnbrett. <laughs> Yeah, we'd have thought the men's competition is a little bit more open, I would say. Obviously, Jesse Peel's is fantastic yeah. talent. Salsar was brilliant all the way through. But the men's is wide yeah. open. I challenge anybody to pick a winner here today, really. First look at men's number one, then, as we move on to the boulder wall in the centre of the wall. Big sloping pinches all the way up this boulder. The zone hold on the right-hand side in the yellow. The theme of the week here has been sort of dynamic moves, some big triple dinos, multi-hand dinos, some just sort of like one-hand release moves and a foot catch. This move is going to have a bit of a pop out to the right, to be honest with you. We've had no time to observe these boulders up close and personal. I think it's worth being honest at this stage, there's no time for that. But we will do our absolute very best down here in the commentary box. Yeah, we had 10 minutes after the women's final, the division of labour, you know, I ran to get lunch. Mike had a quick look at the boulders, a very brief bit of looks, didn't really have time to chat to the root setters. So we're on sighting these boulders as well, we're figuring them out. Joins observation as ever, the climbers get two minutes to look at each one, on mass, they can compare notes, should they wish. Of course, a bit of a language barrier, Team Japan somewhat inevitably sticking together. Uh, during the observation. The Japanese team do speak a, a little bit of English. So just trying which to... I'm guessing is the language being used here between Jan, Jakob and Adam. Adam, I was very impressed actually in the press conference the other day, answered in German to a lot of the questions. Also speaks obviously his native Czech, uh, speaks French and Italian and possibly Spanish as well, I think. Just trying to read the climbers' arms here as to the moves. For me, this is a rollover to start a toe catch, a jump out to the yellow zone hole, which has got an additional thumb catch on it, and a possibly a flip with the left hand, or just a double down into the zone hold. Time's going to tell with that one, but Jakob seemed to be motioning, sort of miming with his arms that it was going to be a catch back with the left hand, but they seem to have changed the rhythm of their arms a little bit into a double into the zone hold. After the zone hold, you got a very confusing sequence after that. The, there's a blue hold you can go up to there. It's a dual texture one with a screw on screwed into the side of it. For me, somehow you've got to end up with your left hand in that, and I'm not quite sure how that is going to be possible. Lots of toe hooks out on the far right, potentially. Big sloping volume up on for the right hand. We saw that same hold in men's number four. Some athletes actually skipped it on that occasion. And a nice big horn to finish. The, um, he, he's got the horn jokes and uh, there's Kokora Fuji closer to the camera he's still observing that boulder and now they move across to the far right as with the women the third boulders on the slab it's three degrees off vertical this section of the wall here in Innsbruck so the climbers uh, are allowed to touch all of the starting holes but they're not allowed to touch any of the other holes the starting holes clearly denoted by the yellow tape there'll be four bits of tape uh, denoting where your four limbs have to go. On occasion, the root setters will specify you must put this hand here or that hand there, but generally they just leave it to the climbers. So if you want to start doing a handstand and the splits and putting your feet above your hands, you're normally more than welcome to do so. Each climber will get four minutes to attempt each boulder.
time is still uh, studying away. Comparing notes, Adam Ondra had such a nightmare in the semi-finals yesterday by his standards. 17th in the World Championship is little short of a disaster. Well, we had a nightmare on this side of the wall as well, on the slab. It was exactly here, about uh, 24 hours ago, not far off to the minute. Yeah, you, if you follow him on uh, social media, bitterly disappointed. <laughs> Says that he's got a long way to go to catch up with these other guys in terms of the modern style of competition climbing. Quite interesting, this men's number three, a really big stand-up move off a pair of matching starting handholds. Zone hold high up on its own. Pretty much non-existent, sort of yellow bit of paint for a zone hold up and right. Does need to be controlled and then a bit of extreme walking out to the left. On to men's number four, and this is a slightly different boulder to what we've seen throughout the competition here. Climbing jargon coming up for you. Big red volume up on the right, they're going to guppy it, <laughs> which basically means you're going to wrap the meat of your hand around it as hard as possible. Known as a guppy in climbing. It's probably known as a guppy, something else in a different language, no doubt. We'll stick with that for now. A pair of big horns down for the feet. And then really wrestling out left. A bit of a, a wrestling match, this one. Some of them indicating whether they can go up and drop down to those horns. It's going to be a really interesting one. To be honest, when I first looked at this, I couldn't quite figure out what on earth was going on. Some of the competitors are looking pretty confused here as well. Interesting to try and listen into a bit of the conversation. We, we visit Japan every year as part of the IFSC tour. I'm afraid I haven't picked up that much of the language just yet. Yeah, just an interesting uh, little insight, Jakob and Adam indeed communicating in English. Yeah, what's interesting about this boulder is, is uh, Jakob was, is, is, you can not I'm just about to see it there, he's motioning that potentially he's going to be heading down to the two ginormous horns that are sort of centre, low centre of the wall, and then roll back up high. Whereas the Japanese are sort of motioning that that's going to be for a pair of heel hooks and you're going to really sort of sit frog-like on those two feet before balancing out left. It'll be a really interesting bowl of this. Big arrow-shaped volumes there, a pair of them with two blockers on the underside due to the angle change, just making sure there's no loose edges of volumes that anybody can crimp or get spiked on. Can't wait for that one, that's going to be a really interesting boulder. Stanley Yeo, the IFSC judge, shepherds the climbers off the wall, they're still comparing notes. Bouldering round in the women's was brilliant. I'm really looking forward to the men's. That's the current standings after the speed. Climbers go in reverse order for how the speed went for them. So uh, Timon and Arasaki will be out first, then it'll be Adam Ondra, then Kai Rada, Kokoro Fuji, Jakob Schubert, and uh, Jan Hoyer. We talked about it quite a lot on the women's side, but because of the combined competition, there is an added element of tactics as we have a look at our bouldering wall. I'll resume in just a second, 18 meters wide, four and a half meters high. Over on the right, we've got the slab, which will house boulder three. Three degrees uh, off vertical. There it is. Then 13 degrees overhanging. The bulk of the wall is 20 degrees overhanging. There's a steep second box to the left that's at 35, 2.15 meters. Protrusion from top to bottom over on the left. I was just going to say, Mike, about uh, the tactics. Jan, I think, has got such a big advantage coming out last. Generally, it's felt that coming out last in the bouldering final has some advantages, some disadvantages, but he can look up and think, well, I went great in the speed. No one's got this boulder, so I might not give it quite 100% and risk injury, risk further fatigue. We talked about it in the women's. It, it, there's so many uh, tactical possibilities, but I think going last in a combined bouldering is an advantage. Yeah, there is a big screen here, as much as they're not supposed to be looking around. It's, are you either allowed to look around? Excuse me. 
uh, they can definitely just have a look at that and figure out what's going on. And like you say, but they can um, figure out in real time as well. Yeah, exactly. How and many attempts have I had? Uh, how many did he have? Yeah, they can really study it while they're on the wall. This is Boulder One. They're the starting holds flashing away. And there's the yellow top hold over on the right. Zone is yellow, top is yellow. Bit of a recurring theme here. The route set is trying to make it as clear as possible. When the climbers are competed there in the middle of the stage on the bouldering, they'll move over to the left of the lead wall and the left hand of the two routes. You've just seen the women's final concluded on the right hand side of the wall. Just going back to that point you were making about Dan Hoyer's advantage, Charlie. And that is one element, and it's so many elements that are kind of unknown in terms of tactics in this Olympic combined at the moment. This is the first really big major IFRC combined competition, and uh, it's really interesting for us to try and analyse it. You guys at home to try and analyse what's going on, but it's interesting for the athletes to try and analyse the tactics as well. Well, I think everybody sitting at home watching climbing has an opinion. Or is it better to come out first in the bouldering finals? Is it better to come out last? Nobody's got any idea about the combined. All of this is new to everyone. Athletes, route setters, commentators. We know how the climbing works. We know how the individual disciplines work. But how they work with each other is the real unknown. If you're just uh, watching us for the first time, welcome to the IFSC. This is bouldering, the second discipline in this combined final. Throughout every year, we have six or seven World Cups in each of the disciplines, speed, lead, and boulder. And then once in a couple of years, we have a massive World Championships, which is what we've had here in Innsbruck, which is concluding with this, an Olympic format combined final. It's the first time we've seen all of the world's best climbers competing in this format. And it is a journey into the unknown. Samoa so Narasaki straight up to the zone. Most important score for a climber is how many of the boulders they top, but then each boulder has a zone hole that you can see clearly marked. And if they're tied on top, it comes down to how many zones they get. And uh, if still tied, it comes down to attempts, but Tomoa straight up to the zone, no problem there. Yeah, Tomoa Narasaki, boulder world champion from 2016. Missed out on the boulder finals somehow by not doing the boulder number three yesterday, I think it was. And this one is a really hard set of basic pinches with a bit of a dynamic move out to the right. That is the hold that he's failed to get that time cleanly. Additional little thumb catch underneath just improves that hold just enough to hopefully make the move possible. So two and a half minutes for uh, Tomoa. Big dual texture pinch on the right hand to start. Just trying to work the thumbs there. Samoa's going to be out for redemption a little bit here. Really high left foot lock. That's worked well for him. And there's the jump move out to the right. Half his time remaining, four minutes for each climber. Pinch to side pull to foot release. You've seen that move a number of times here. Obviously slightly different, different hand holds different volume to land for the foot in climbing basically there's never the same move twice always a slight variation except in speed these routes have been individually crafted by a big team of route setters over the last two and a half weeks yeah, Manu Hassler of Switzerland, Chief Boulder Setter, and uh, Jan Zabranek of the Czech Republic, Chief Setter in the lead. Samoa shaking out with one minute ten left. Team Japan. Been put through the ringer already by Miho Nanaka and Akira Naguchi on the women's side, and with one minute to go, they're watching Samoa Narasaki. It was quite a theme in the uh, women's final. Climbers having problems with their skin inevitably after such a brutal 10 days of competition and particularly intense uh, last 24 hours for most of these climbers. 
quite a nice little starting move there with the feet. Double undercuts for the feet to start. No way he can stand on top of those volumes. Tomorrow this time then, I'm sure he'll go back into the toe hook. He does. Now it's all about this big flick and the foot land. Way short of it that time, unfortunately. Well, we're not quite up to his 2016 levels of strength this week here in Innsbruck, really. Struggling in his time, it is out. Ten seconds were left on the clock, not enough for Tomoa. He heads back. Only the zone to his name on that occasion. Let's have a look. Here we go, he's straight up to the zone. Uh, no problem. It's going to be a, quite a wild move, this one out to the right. Not too many static moves here this week. Got to maintain the height with the foot there. It's a really high foot volume, actually. A lot of times the root setters will put the, uh, the landing foothold in a quite a natural position, but that one seems quite high, which means when you hit the pinch out on the right, you're actually going to pull quite hard on it. Adam Andre, on the other hand, is out for blood here on the bowling wall after failing so badly yesterday in the semi-final. Yeah, he only topped two of the bowlers, and he needed four to go through to the final crowd and he would deny the opportunity to see him alone on the Innsbruck wall in a final now he gets his shot in the combined he was fifth in the speed now his four minutes begins he wasn't quite sure what all the various beeps meant you can see that uh, on the black holes three bits of tape on black holes and a fourth on that blue one up and right. Has to control the starting handholds, can't just slap them, he has to actually control them. And now he's uh, heading out towards the zone hold, like Tomoa, no problem at all with that. Hops for the heel hook on the left foot, that might put him in a much more stable position. Reaches out, oh, I was just about to say reaches out easily, he does actually reach the hold easily, but still has to make the big release, and sometimes releasing the heel can be a little bit more violent than releasing a toe hook. Uh, interesting reaction from Adam Real. Adam Andre came back down onto the mat, smiled and nodded his head as if to say, I can do that one. Yeah, his foot on that right-hand volume just sort of hit on the inside edge rather than flat through the sole of his foot. He's just straighten up his foot a little bit and he should be in here. left now for Adam. Uh, still only had one attempt been on the mats over a, a minute and a half. As I say, I, I really don't think we can underestimate the effect of climbing in a final last night for Kokoro and Kai, but time will tell. But skin, energy, you don't sleep as well when you're buzzing. So much to think about. That, yeah, Surely gives him a disadvantage. It'd be amazed if Kai Harada got any sleep whatsoever last night. And they've been in isolation since this morning as well. A long time behind the wall. If he had any sense, he'd have brought his mattress and pillow with him and got some more kit this morning. Uh, two minutes now for Adam. Andre going for a different left shoe to right shoe. He swapped it out for a slightly softer right shoe, I think. I'm not 100% sure if he wore that on the first go. I'm just looking down at the mats, I don't see another pair of shoes, so presumably he came out uh, in them. I didn't notice a, a swap. Let's yeah. focus on his attempt now. This is number three for Adam. So he was cruising up to the zone last time. This time he's got the swing controlled nicely. Adam Ondra lining it up for the first top in this combined final bouldering. And there it is. He was so disappointed after the semi-finals yesterday. And that's what it means. <laughs> Adam Ondra is putting on a show once again at a world championship. Yeah, he's a better climber than he is a gymnast, but still, 10 out of 10 for enthusiasm. Yeah, that was brilliant. Uh, you can see how much it means to him. After his previous attempt, he knew he could do it, really. It was just a case of getting it done. So much passion when Adam Andre climbs. It's an absolute pleasure to have on the stage. He's got a really good shoe for heel hooking on the left side and a really good one for smearing on the right side. Different stiffnesses in shoes. He obviously read the boulder in the uh, observation period, decided what the best tactics were with the shoes. 
almost, I thought, slid out of that finish hole for a second. He yeah. was moving on it for quite, for quite a while before fully controlling it. This is what it looked like from about as close as you can get without being sitting on the hold. Bang, bang, right landed just before the left. You think he's up for this? You bet he is, Adam Ondra. Second in the lead World Championships last weekend and then 17th in the bouldering. He wants to make amends. Here's Kai Harada. Less than 20 hours after that momentous final. He's back on the Innsbruck mats. Part of him must be wondering if last night actually happened. A very unusual situation to find yourself in where you win a world championship and the next afternoon you're back in yeah. the same arena, climbing on the same wall. We saw him sort of very stoic on the medal ceremony and just being really calm. And I do wonder if he was wondering about the combine as well. He'll save the celebrating for tonight. And last night was all about getting back to business. So strong out to the right. This is what we saw for him last night. Incredible power. He's going to try releasing off the toe. Oh, oh this is a masterclass from Kai Hirada as it was last night. Flash for him on Boulder 1. He can't do it again, can he? Now he's starting to enjoy himself. He didn't seem to be enjoying himself quite like that last night until he secured the win, but Kai Harada might be on a bit of a procession here on the boulders. Last night was not a fluke. It certainly was not. Same right shoe as Andre was wearing, but it just hit that. Right hand with so much more control than Andre. Andre was really moving at speed when he hit the foothold with the right foot. Kai Harada just floated across, hit the top hole with just the one hand before controlling it and bringing up the left hand. Nineteen years old. You said he had saved the celebrating for tonight, Mike. He's only just old enough to buy a beer. <laughs> and he's absolutely crushing it in the Innsbruck bouldering. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here, live in the Olympia world. We just had the women's combined final. We now have the men's. Jan Hoyer came out on top in the speed climbing. Kai Harada is currently leading the way in the bouldering. Out next will be Kokora Fuji. Here he is. Fifth for him last night in the final. I've got to say, if Kai Harada is tired, he's done himself a real favour. He wasn't on the mats long this time. Quickly fired up that boulder and uh, disappears again. Probably got back on his mattress in isolation, got his pillow out, and he's getting another 20 minutes of shut time. Yeah, quickly get the earplugs in and have a quick <laughs> snooze. I think when you're 19, you, know, you, do, you don't need sleep, do you? Good to go, no matter what. Kura not brought up the left foot for that move. Happy to pounce between the two holds. So Kokoro, first time up to the zone. Everyone's got to the zone on their first attempt on this boulder. Kai Arada got to the top. Kokoro just needs to find a way to release and does so. And we're about to see the second Japanese flash of this boulder in the space of a couple of minutes. We are, that's Kokoro Fuji, top for him. Piece of cake really in the end. Opted for the left drop knee before turning it into a Turk in the same position. He's happy with that. Enjoying themselves out there at the moment in the men's combined. To me, somehow, Charlie, this feels like a, a lower pressured event compared to the individual disciplines at this stage leading up to Tokyo. But I think next year, obviously 2020 is going to be completely different. Yeah, well, next year we've got to an Olympic selection event. We've also got the World Championship. So this format is going to be uh, increasingly common and the prize is going to become increasingly valuable. One thing of note, I didn't have time to make it back from chatting to Yanni Garnbrecht at the end of the women's final. She was clearly pleased to have won, but she wasn't anything like as emotional as she was when she won the bouldering in the World Championships. And that, that is just perhaps a symptom of the fact that we're just trying out this Olympic format for the first time and it doesn't yet have the kudos of uh, a win in an individual discipline in an IFSC World Championships. Obviously in Tokyo 2020, this is how the medals will be decided, but I was 
I was slightly surprised that Yanya was quite as calm as she was. I don't know if that came across in the interview. Yeah, I think having said all of that between both of us, we've just sort of agreed on the situation. Try and tell that to Jakob Schubert and Jan Hoyer if one of those wins it. I think they'll be trying to lift the roof off tonight during the lead final. Yeah, here is uh, Jakob Schubert, penultimate climber onto the boulder. It's been flashed twice by Kai Harada and Kora Fuji. Simone Arasaki couldn't do it, and Adam Ondra did it on his third go. Here goes Jakob, the lead world champion, 20-time IFSC World Cup winner. And he's going well on this ball as well. Is it about to see his third flash in a row? There it is. They're obviously catching these flashes. Nice down from Jakob. Looked like he had to try relatively hard there. And a really scary last move, not in terms of the fear factor, but just the sort of nervous energy you have to kind of dispel going for that finishing hold. It's quite a long way, and there's a huge push. So as you jump, your left arm mantles really hard to hit that top hold. Pressure's on now for Jan Hoyer. He's going to know that this bolt is getting plenty of tops, coming quicker and fast now. Yeah, it's... Uh getting absolutely hammered this boulder Tomo and Arasaki the 2016 boulder world champion came out couldn't do it since then I don't think anyone's been out longer than 40 seconds it's uh, it's been a revolving door of climbers onto the mats onto the top hold and back the other out the other side of the stage here comes Jan Hoyer won the speed climbing climbs last in the bouldering Hashtag IFSC WCH if you want to get in touch on Twitter. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here with our second combined final of the day. We had the women this morning and early afternoon. Only finished at 20 past two and at half two we were underway with the men, wasting no time here in Innsbruck. There's Jan Hoyer. You can see the clock ticking away behind him. He's got four minutes. Boulder's been flashed three times. Jan, 2014 overall Boulder World Cup winner. And he won't flash it, so already lost a tiny bit of ground to uh, his rivals. Got plenty of time to find a top, though. Yeah, I'd say he was looking pretty big in that space that he got himself into there. Kakura Fuji didn't move the left foot up and just jumped from low down, didn't bother with the sort of squeeze to bring the left foot up. Jan Hoyer might just have another look at that himself as well. Just go for a jump. Not too happy with the conditions on there at the moment, Jan Hoyer. He can feel around that hole wherever he fancies because it is a starting hold. Again, not too happy in that position. Yeah, so 245 now for Jan Hoyer. As you said, it's a bit of a pet theme for me. Well, it interests me. I'm not going to apologise. I'm, I'm interested in the difference between taller and shorter uh, climbers. And as you said, Jan he has looked pretty big as he tried to bring that left foot up. A good example of why just being tall isn't always an advantage. I remember when he won in 2017 in Munich. Amazing evening, Mike. You were there for that yeah. as well. Uh, I seem to remember in the commentary box we were joined by Anna Storr and you, you were a little too starstruck to think about anything else. But Jan won there. And uh, let's just watch him out across the zone before I resume. Yeah, he just drops it moving out right. I was, yeah, I was about to say, uh, there was talk online that Jan won because he was tall and there's no doubt that a lot of the boulders in Munich suited him that night but as I said to him in the live interview afterwards no 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 it evens out don't because Jan kind of said well maybe if I wasn't tall I wouldn't have won tonight and I said no no t take it when they go your way and accept it sportingly when they don't and uh, that's a good example it's not always easier for tall climbers he had a lot more a lot more human to cram into a small space that attempt on the boulder, he didn't look really comfortable after the first move. He's 
right hand on the zone hold wasn't really in the sweet spot. It was really low. He was always shaking on the next blue pinch above. And then I would have been very surprised if he managed to latch the next right hand out. Yeah, no, he's got quite a bit of work to do here. One minute left. And was trying really, really hard on that one. There's Kai Harada. And it must just feel like the last 24 hours have been a dream for Kai Harada. Yeah, that's the move you mean. He did it slightly differently that time. It still looked a bit of a squeeze getting those long legs in against the wall. And we're really unhappy on the pinches here tonight. He just doesn't seem to be getting the contact between the skin and the pinch at all. And that's interesting, Mike. I don't think if this uh, was a normal bouldering final and Jan knew that this was it, all or nothing, I don't think he'd have bailed on that boulder. He might have just shaken out and had one really good burn. As it is, he knew he topped the speed climbing. He knew he was finding the boulder really hard, so why waste the energy? You've still got three more boulders and the lead route to come. Yeah, that time he didn't opt to get his left foot high either. Just tried to go in the more sort of powerful method, keeping the left foot down. I have to agree with you on that, Charlie. It's sensible to walk off the stage if you're not getting on with that style of hold. Yeah, the subtleties of the tactics in, um, in bouldering never cease to amaze me anyway but you add in the fact that climbing in a combined format across three disciplines it gets even more complex and as I say I can't help thinking that in a boulder final Jan Hoyer might have just thought right I'm going to pull these holes off this wall or top the boulder and uh, and that time just thought I might just leave that one there remember of course they've observed the boulder so he knows what's to come so he might have uh, looked at boulders two, three, and four and liked the look of them a lot more than he liked number one. We don't know what he made of them during observation. This was Kai Harada flashing the boulder. Has Jakob Schubert also flashing it. If you're wondering what the little felt tip marks are on the holds and the volumes, by the way, when we get the close-up, the root set has preset these boulders, so they've set them in the weeks preceding this competition. And then when they want to put the boulders back on the wall, they just line up the marks that they've already made on both the volumes and the wall. And uh, hopefully chuck them straight back on. Moving on to boulder number three, yeah, boulder number two, excuse me, on the left-hand end. Really funky boulder, this one. Definitely sort of some sort of release out to the zone hold again. So the zone has got a little screw on addition. You won't be able to see it in that graphic. There's a little additional thumb catch right on the underside, nearly plumb in the middle of that yellow zone hold, so I think there could be a bit of a double jump down to that. Um, some scenes behind the wall, there are a lot of pacing around, we saw the women sitting very statically in the chairs, men getting rid of their nervous energies, but pacing back and forth. And there it is, they'll be over on the far left of the wall, coming up through the steepest section and then pulling on to the 20 degree overhang above. Really fascinating to see the techniques employed on this boulder on out onto the right hand side, especially two volumes quite far and right. What's going to go down with those with the toes? There is Tomoa, doesn't quite look himself, uh, couldn't find a top on number one, no shame on that. Jan Hoyer couldn't either, but Tomoa doesn't quite have that uh, assured air about him that he did a couple of years ago. Yeah quite found his mojo for the past couple of seasons. He won the World Cup in Moscow back in April, but that's really been the exception rather than the norm that it was in 2016. Let's see what he can do here on number two. 3.45 on the clock and he sets off. Bashed up to the zone, no problem on the first boulder. And that is not a comfy way of holding that left hand. Incredible finger strength. So much power there from Tomoa. Now he's going to swing into the toe hooks. Will he cross up to this next hold or will he shoulder it out? This is more like the Tomoa we know and love watching. Oh, it's brilliant from the Tomoa Narasaki. That is sheer brilliance. We we're talking about Tomoa Narasaki from a couple of years ago. That is him at his very best. That is Tomoa style. All the way through, just such Impressive movement, every single hold, a hugely powerful move to begin with that thumb catch. And after this point, just watch the movement in his body. Just constantly moving, flicking between the holds, making minute adjustments on the fly. Great use of the hill, compressing with the left toe there. 
bumped again up to the right hand hold and at this point there was no doubt the speed that he moves on the wall is incredible oh that might, when he swung the left hand across where's the move i could watch this one all day he swings the left hand across and flicks his hips in it an was instant a, it, it was almost uh, like the the movement traveled down his body it was kind of like cracking a whip where it just moves along the whip and it's top half his body moved and uh, then the, the bottom did as well. There was Jan Hoyer and Jakob Schubert uh, comparing moves. Not carrying a lot of timber either of them, judging by that shot. So. Here's Adam Ondra. Adam Ondra does bring two pairs of shoes out. He's got the same combination as the previous boulder. He's obviously not as confident that he's read it right this time because last time he came out with the shoes already on his feet and didn't bring the spares. We've got the Adams family theme tune. I'm yeah, half proud, half depressed that I recognised it, but yeah, a bit of a strange one from the DJ. Uh, and now he's underway. Uh, we'll be well aware of what Tomoa's just done, Adam. Crowd responding well to Adam. They know they're watching one of the greats here. And uh, a slightly different method, it would seem, to Tomoa. I think he's going to go direct. Doesn't need that penultimate hold. Nice done from Adam Onto for the majority of that boulder. He was using the same technique as Tomoa. But then in the top, could really well shoulder the right hand hold. Check coach, just checking exactly how many seconds that was. Yeah, shouldered the hold and then mantled up into the volume. I have to say, to be down at the mats, I'm not Adam Onto, but that seemed like a pretty obvious method. Something about that top right hand volume this week is not. People don't like it, they're not using it. It got skipped in the semi finals, it's getting skipped on the same bit of wall here in the combined final. Yeah, we saw Yerne Kruder trying to skip two holds, albeit unsuccessfully, on the last boulder in the semi finals yesterday. Uh, Adam has completely ignored that last blue volume. All the effort the root set has put in, he just ignores it. But. Uh, Great top from him. We talked we talked to you earlier about taller and shorter climbers. Adam's extraordinarily natural flexibility through his joints, his knee, his hip, his elbow, meant that getting that left foot up basically in front of his chest just didn't bother him at all. Here's Kai Harada now, boulder world champion. Flash the first boulder. Adam Ondra goes into the provisional lead. Two tops on the first two boulders for him. Kai Hirada, Kokora Fuji or Jakob Schubert could match Adam and pass him on attempts, so as it stands. Kai really dominated boulder number one. Seen this boulder go down quite easily now. Certainly not easy as a climb though. Just assessing his different options here, he's going to go for the big release now. Goes for it and can't keep the left hand on. It looks like his little finger was just coming off there a little bit as he was releasing. First time he's fallen off a boulder today. Flash the first one. Let's have another look. It looked like a big move for him. He was actually just crimping on the left hand side of that blue volume. And it is a big release. And to be honest, I thought this move was going to be a lot harder than the first two climbers actually made it look. Uh, Tomoa did the most extraordinary, uh, awkward outward facing pinch move. Yeah. The, meat, the meat wrap. <laughs> as it's known in the industry. <laughs> it's great having you along, Mike. I always try and think of a nice, polite way of describing something, and then you give it the docker, <laughs> the shipyard worker terms from the, the bad streets of the root setting world. Tried looking for a completely different method that time. So back down on the mats, bit of a rethink required. Team Japan. Watching on nervously. Coach Cam uh, had been employed a lot this week. Yeah, I've enjoyed those shots. I have, yeah, it's been great. Especially when you see the people concerned later and give them a bit of jib. <laughs> Especially if you've got one team at the front who's celebrating their climb and the opposite team behind sort of just not quite sure where to look. Checking if their shoelaces are still tied up. Yeah, never sit behind the coaches. You'll be on TV a lot more than you want to be. So here goes Kai. Mike, we've seen Kai in a couple of World Cup finals uh, before Innsbruck and in youth championships and stuff, but uh, 
because of how well he's gone in this championships. He's uh, been on the live stream a lot more than we're used to. And he's really interesting to see more of how he moves. He makes quick movements look slow. He almost looks as if we're watching a replay with it just turned down to 0.9 speed. Yeah, I think the Japanese team have that as a feature of their training as well. They, they really do specialize in quick moves and dynamic moves. I think that's why one of the contributing factors to Kai's win last night, Team Japan are very good at dynamic climbing. But I think when you watch Tomoa, it looks quick. Sometimes when Kai does it, just because of the, the smooth way in which he moves, quick movements don't look that quick. He's got a lovely, smooth, almost effortless climbing style. It's been really enjoyable to watch it more and more on the stream. Yeah, I think we definitely saw that on Men's 4 last night. If you haven't seen that, go watch that fantastic final. Kai not finding an effort here at all. He's not happy on this left hand at all. So Tomoa wrapping it. Andra just kind of held it with no issues, really. But Kai is not happy up there at the moment. Maybe fatigue is finally starting to kick in. You can't help but think it must be. He needs to stay clear of that start sign. Here we go again. And uh, here he goes with the right hand. Wasn't far off. Uh, I was about to say, I don't think he'll have another go, but he will. If he can hold that with one hand, it would be absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, but I think also it would be absolutely crucial because he's not going to get a top now time-wise, but a zone might bump him up a position or two in the rankings. It's five seconds to secure the zone here. That was close. It was yeah, a good effort. I don't think the judges will give him that zone as being controlled, but again, think about the Olympic format and how the combined will work. If you're in a bouldering final, you think, well, fifth or sixth, it doesn't matter. In a combined, it really matters. So I think uh, as we see more of these combined competitions, we might see climbers who are currently fifth and sixth, even on the la go on the last bowler and just want to tear it off the wall to try and get a zone because fifth might make all the difference. So uh, Kai deciding to have another go on the boulder when perhaps uh, it wasn't wise from an energy point of view, that, but that zone could have been so crucial. Can you imagine what it takes? You've just finished a round of bouldering. Somehow you've got to scrape yourself off the map and think, right, now I've got to try and go up a route. It's going to be one of the hardest things I've ever tried. Grading-wise, it's going to be in the region of 8C or above. And I, you've I, just I tried speed and bouldering. It's, it's insane. Uh, you talk to most climbers the day after they've done a bouldering World Cup or World Championship semi-final and final. They're absolutely knackered. I don't, I, I don't see how fatigue is not a huge disadvantage here for Kai Harada and Kokora Fuji, but I should say uh, in the Olympics, they will have a lot more rest time than this. We won't have this situation. This is a, a unusual circumstances. But uh, yeah, I find it hard to believe that they can possibly be as fresh and powerful as the climbers who didn't take part in the final. I suppose one leveler is that everyone in this final did at least take part in the Boulder semi-finals. Kura really quick on the speed wall. Did really well in the Boulder final last night. Does go for the meat wrap on the left hand temporarily. A big release off the hill. of his four minutes elapsed. Yeah. 240 now for Tomoe, uh, for Kokoro. He's taking a good long rest here. Still Jakob and Jan to come. The Austro-German pair got off to a cracking start in the speed climbing. Jakob, I think, certainly would have settled for second. I think Jan probably fancied his chances in the speed climbing. And Kikoro Fuji, who's currently on the bouldering wall, does hold that big move with the right hand. And he's a pretty big unit as well, Kikoro Fuji. It's a lot, lot of weight to hang on that one hand on a pretty poor hold. Now then, will he use the penultimate hold? I think he's going to. He's not even looking at the top. Should have had a word with Adam Andre. You don't need that one. Oh, that was great. The way he held that right-hand zone hold was crazy. So much pinch strength just to hold it, catch the release. And then this bit, I'm really enjoying this section of Toe Hook's moves. 
Really fascinating as to what the climbers have got to do with their feet. You see Tamura just really working the feet bicycle in between the two volumes. But with Tsuk on the right foot, not really hoping hell that he's going to hold that top hold at that speed. I really like this boulder. I think it's interesting. It's been flashed a couple of times, but uh, Kokora Fuji couldn't do it when the world champion in bouldering couldn't do it. You know it's hard. It, it's just interesting. There's different methods. It's powerful. It requires coordination. There's different ways of topping it. I think it's a really good boulder. And so far, Kokora Fuji has not found a top on it. He did find a zone on his second attempt, and he's gunning now for the top. He's had another long rest. I think this is quite clever from Kokora Fuji. On a boulder like this, physically, you can't just keep pulling on and trying. Got to, got to try and find a bit of rest time. Just in his rest period there, I wonder if he's even thinking about the boulder as just trying to get everything back. Is that top move? He's going to have to have a rethink, but the toe hook section is so complicated. He might just have to go up there and feel it out again. Drops into the double toes again now. Will he try something else? It does look like he's going to a similar method, flipping that left hand around, really pushing it out. His foot slips, but somehow manages to hold it. Can he reduce the speed to this top hold? Andre did a heel hook. Uh, not Andre, sorry, but just uh, before Andre, he did a heel hook. But this is Andre's method, pushing out on the left. Well, no shortage of effort from Kokora Fuji. It looks like he's gripping his... Uh, it doesn't look like the forearm, Sammy. That looks like the elbow. Hopefully no injury there. Let's have another look. No wonder he's gripping his elbow. Oh. Yeah, all the force was in the wrong direction there. It was trying to push your elbow in rather than out. And I think he was uh, a couple of millimetres away there from giving a physio in Tokyo six months business. That could have been quite nasty. Uh, Adam Ondra, the only climber so far to have topped both of the boulders. Jakob Schubert now, the latest to try his luck. The local hero. So four minutes begins ticking for Jakob. Flash the first boulder. If he flashes this one, he knows he'll finish this rotation on boulder two in the lead. Adam Ondra currently leading the way with two tops, but they required him four attempts to get. So a quick flash here from Jakob, of course, an awful lot easier said than done, would put him into the lead, having come second in the speed climbing and being the reigning lead world champion. Things have been looking pretty good for Jakob. Goes to the right hand and does hold it. He is so strong, Jakob Schubert. Managed to make the left hand stick there. Didn't get the full release like Akura, but it's, we know it's this next section that's really causing the upset. Does flash to the zone, though. What's the method going to be? Turns down the left hand, presses it out. Looks like he's going to try and go hand to foot. Not 100% sure about it. Trying to decide what to do here, Jakob. I think he had a quick look at the top hole, thought about going straight for it. Smashes that right hand down. Gets the thumb swap. Gets the foot swap. Gets the top. Jakob Schubert. Two boulders, two flashes. Brilliant moment here for Jakob Schubert in front of his home crowd. He had to go into warrior mode there on that boulder. Each move he worked so hard when he went again with the right hand to that top blue volume. He had to try so, so hard to hold on. Worked hard through this section, the left hand just held him on there. Let's have another look through this top section if we can. Goes into the toe hooks initially. The force went through his body on this top move was so impressive. It looked like he had a real fight on his hands there, Jakob Schubert. That's what we want to see, though, Charlie. We love seeing the climbers really fighting hard on the boulders. That's what Jakob wants as well. He doesn't want this to come down to number of attempts on the jumps. He wants to pull really hard on some bad holds. That's a great method through there. Same as Tomoa. Up with the right again. Drop the left in and have some of that to the crowd. I think that is uh, Jakob Schubert sent to the crowd. Are you not entertained? Well, uh, 
I mean, we, we, we talk about Adam Ondra perhaps being the greatest climber of all time. Pretty hard to look past old Jakob Suber. Yeah, started climbing back when he was 12, but uh, it's been success after success after success. Uh, seven straight World Cup wins in 2011 when he absolutely dominated that season. He's been a world champion in 2012, again in 2018, two Boulder World Cup wins, 18 lead World Cup wins, and he's absolutely smashing this combined final. He's a phenomenal competitor, I think. Not only is he a great climber, but he's great at competition climbing. I've said it before, though, in, in the sport that requires such tough training, Jakob is so impressive, and so is this chap here, Jan Hoyer. Good friend of Jakob's now looking to repeat Jakob's feat on boulder number two. Jan, to be honest, needs to get on the board. Didn't top number one, although he did get a zone and he's not going to flash it. Looks like he can top it, though. Yeah, it's going to be diff disappointed with that foot slip there. Through the first section. I don't, I don't think it'd be a problem for him to go back through there. Did just test the length between the two handholds, see if there's an option. Just a spin of the foot. So much force going through the shoulder at that point. That is the shoulder hold. The hold was almost flexing on the wall there a little bit. He's literally trying to rip it off the wall. Mike, you said earlier, uh, Jakob doesn't want this decided by who took the most number of tries on a jump. He just wants to pull hard on some bad holds. Sounds like a summary of Jan Hoyer to me. What can he find here? Try again, won't thank the DJ for the quiet music. This is a bit more like it needs a big shot of adrenaline because he's got 20 or 30 seconds of pulling pretty hard coming up here, Jan Hoyer. Then Hoyer's just skipped the, one of the best holds on the route. Just flew up to the right-hand shoulder and matched the finish hold. That is Jan Hoyer, 2014-2015 in a nutshell there. Yeah, that's his, uh, him at his vintage best. Who needs to hold? Uh, yeah, Team Germany all uh, fist pumping each other. So many times we've done that. Stood back on the mat, thought, oh, nah, I'm just going to skip the holds. Great showman. As you said, it's one of the best holds on the, on the boulder. It's the most in cut hold on the boulder, anyway. Didn't even need it. Twice we've seen this boulder done missing a hold, but different holds in the process. Uh, he missed two out. Adam Ondra missed one. Root set to say, could have saved himself a bit of bother here. A few less screw holes in the wall, that's for sure. That was a nice, nice moment there. Yeah, don't forget to match Jan. He's too experienced and too much of a pro to make that mistake. So here's how it stands after two bowlers. Jakob Schubert leading the way. Two tops, both of them flashes. Adam Ondra keeping him honest with two tops. Everyone else got one top. Interestingly, two of the climbers got their tops on number one, and the other two, Tomo Narasaki and Yan Hoya, got theirs on boulder two. Uh, everyone apart from Kai Arada has got both zones. <laughs> Rattling along this men's bouldering. Yeah, good move so far. Same as the women's competition, good boulders. We'll move over to the slab now, real change of gear. Uh, let's have a look, that was Tomo Narasaki finding the top. This was Adam Ondra. Shoving that long left leg in front of his chest, hopping up to the top hold. This was Kai Harada, just couldn't stay on that zone. No lack of commitment. Here's Jakob. Look at this reaction. Yeah, you beauty. This was Jan, who looked like he might be having a bit of bother. No such worries. Here's Tomoa, he's out onto the slab. So there are the start holds flashing there. 
possible slight uh, awkward judgment for the um, for the judges, Mike, that people don't accidentally uh, touch the hold in between the, the start hand holds whilst pulling on. Yeah, you fear if they're touching, that starts turns into a combo hold. We just have a look if they are touching. But uh, as we said, we didn't have time to actually uh, go down to the mats. Yeah, having said that, it's the, it is the most natural position to start in potentially. You can see that again exactly what Tamar just did there because he might have just skipped that. The judge is pulling him off. Yeah, this is interesting, Charlie. Because this is exactly what you're talking about. If they are touching, that is a controversial decision because, in theory, all three of those holds become one hold. He didn't touch with his second foot. I thought I'd spotted it, wasn't 100% sure, but George, the judge did agree with me. Uh, regardless of whether they're touching, you don't actually come that close to touching the one that Tamo is currently standing on. That's what I was worried about, that you might just clip it with your knee. Uh, so no, no problem up to the zone to Moa. Does look like a little lean across jump to the first hold and then ping again to a relatively good in-cut crimp on that blue volume that's attached to the red volume. It's really it's pretty much impossible to tell if those starting holds are touching. The big volumes up above are. I don't think, unless someone makes a silly mistake, I don't think that will really affect the competition, to be honest. No. It's a natural starting position, two jugs. And then up, it doesn't really change the body position at all. Just a slight mistake there from Samoa. There he goes, one, two. He's currently trying to go very dynamically out to the left. I do wonder if it is possible to sort of creep it across the slab rather than jump it. Jumping is... Samoa's preferred style, though. We've seen him land some pretty spectacular moves down the years at the IFSC. Again, if it was a jump, there's nothing to oppose against on the right hand, so there might be some sort of hand flip somewhere. Oh, oh he just skips out the zone altogether, Tomoe Narasaki. Pops out left again, the route setters will be thinking, what do we have to do? Tomoe Narasaki. He like knew exactly what he wanted to do there. Just pogoed out the start position, basically to the last move on the boulder. Let's have another look. Stood here, just absolutely gunned it across the slab, bounced off the top left hold, didn't even bother with the initial stand-up, like you said, Charlie. But from that point onwards, another good top hold. But will anyone uh, else find that method? That's a move made for Tomoa. Yeah, exactly. Just as I was saying in the previous attempt, he said he does prefer to go dynamically if he can. Has put himself into a provisional lead with that one, two top three zones. First climber out on men's number three, though. There is Adam Andre. Brought. He's bringing more out each time. <laughs> it's like a comedy sketch, this Adam Andre. So. Initially didn't bring anything out, then he brought a spare pair of shoes, now he brings his rucksack. Is this, is this a bet with some friends? This time he's got the matching pair of shoes, he's got the same right foot on, different left foot, much uh, overall a soft pair of shoes compared to sort of downturned left. Uh, they're not touching had on those the holes, holes, are they? Well, I can't help thinking Adam just touched that hold actually. Uh, if it isn't touching one of the official start holes, it's not a starting hold, and I think Adam just touched it, but uh, it doesn't appear to be the case. Yeah, good spot. Might be an appeal on that one if it comes down to attempts. Adam definitely lucky at going to the zone. He's not even thought about the Tomoa method yet. Oh, look at that hold, it's desperate. That's not really a hold. You're sort of aiming for it is one thing, but if you just forget about it and try and stand up, you're pretty much in the same position as you are if you try and go for it. Yeah, Very we'll slow-mo. We're calling it a hold because we've got to call it something, but it doesn't meet my uh, strict definition of a climbing hold still. Here goes Adam Andre. Can he find a way to do this jump out left? No, he can't. Uh, that looked a bit like Tomoa's first attempt, so Tomoa just went haywire. Once again, we see a sort of slabby dino here. mistake of touching that hold again. He might have been standing right in the judge's line of view on that one, luckily for him. 
Here goes Adam again. He's got himself stood up now. Look at concentration on his face. So he begins to head out left and he's close to hanging on to that. Looked like he brought the right hand on top of the left. He might be better putting it round to the, the right hand side of the hold. Strange jump, really. Sort of I've seen this a number of times this week. Jumping to what is conventionally a, a one-handed hold, and see it there. It's just really a small crimp, and a lot of times we saw it tomorrow, sort of stacking on top of the other hand. Just lets the feet air off for a few seconds there. So uh, no problem on the zone for Adam. get to. Oh, and he won't get much closer than that, Adam Andre. Yeah, quick tap of the right hand on the top of the triangle, and then double down. See the method there, oh, it's horrible watching the hands clamp together like that, slowly grinding off of the crimp. This time, Adam Andre gets it done, same method, tap the right hand, doubles down, then goes back up to the top of the volume. No mistakes on the finishing move. Adam Andre is so pleased with himself. He is getting it done here this afternoon. Adam Andre has really trained a lot on the modern style of bouldering over the last few months after climbing so much outdoors. You can see how much it means to him to perform well all of a sudden on these boulders. Brilliant sprints off the stage. Uh, Mike, one thing to flag, by the way, look at Adam on the score. I think he was uh, given an attempt against him for touching that hold. I said at the time, it looks to me like he's just touched the hold and it's not one of the start holds. The crucial point is whether the holds are touching them because uh, you and I didn't have any time in between the women's final and this one. We haven't been able to go down to the mats to confirm it, but if they uh, are touching, then it's a start hold. If they're not touching, and he's not allowed to touch it before he starts. And it looks to me like Adam's been given an additional attempt there. George is always having to work hard here at these championships, just to even spot that little hand touch on the volume. Yeah, I don't think they'll be thanking the root setters for putting a non-legal start hold right in the middle of uh, legal star holes. So it must be really close on that left-hand side of that hold. The cameraman still hasn't quite found the shot we want that would answer our questions. One thing's for sure is the athletes and their coaches will know the rule book inside out. So, there. Oh, let's see, again, doesn't double tap the right foot down. And a judge runs judge on. Runs on again. We saw that with Tomoa. Quite surprising this because uh, whilst the the handholds are do seem a little ambiguous, the, the foot's pretty clear. Okay, so straight up to the zone for Kai. Kai just lost his mojo a little bit here in this Boulder combined final after the second boulder. Well, given the fact that pretty much uh, any sports coach now would say to him, you should be asleep after when, what he went through yesterday, and as it is, he's competing in a combined final. It's understandable that the energy levels might be running a little low. It's like a footballer winning the World Cup and then going out to try and do it again the next day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's uh, quite amazing, really. 
Now he goes out. No, he's not to uh, not happy at all with this method there, Kai Harada. Yeah, he seems to be a little bit stuck here between a slow method and a fast method. In the end, we saw with Tomoa and Adam Ondra ended up jumping out to the left. So Kai Harada pulls back on. What can he find here? Definitely uh, beginning to look slightly fatigued, uh, more than understandable. Quite an unusual method there, trying to grab the volume with the right hand as he came across. It's kind of hard to see the, the movement as a whole with these angles, but uh, you can see at least what he's aiming for. It done one minute to go for Kai Harada. He's not going to get time now and he's not going to fall off from there. Top for Kai Harada. So that gives him uh, two tops. Kai topped all four bowlers yesterday in the final and all four in the semi final. It looks like he just wants to conserve every bit of energy he's got. Probably daren't look across at the uh, lead wall. Still got to try that after the fourth boulder. So there we see it, Adam under three tops. Uh, Tomoa Narasaki and Jakob Schubert and Kai Arada all got two tops. Jakob Schubert, Kokora Fuji and Jan Hoyer look yet to attempt this third boulder. Here comes Kokoro. Olympia World in Innsbruck has been treated to a full day of climbing. action has been absolutely non-stop and uh, here's Kokoro ready to roll. So, Kokora pulls on. Oh, he, he had the zone and, and looked as if his attention just wandered slightly. And he was already thinking about the next move. Yeah, he saw, looked over to the left. Wasn't quite solid on that uh, thumb, although you could easily ask how solid you could ever be on a hold that bad. Let's have another look. Here he goes. Yeah, again, can't just can't quite make that thumb stick. His compatriot Kokora, uh, Tomo Narasaki got this done on his fourth go. Kokora had two attempts already. He tries to grab the top of the volume. As Kai did. Nobody yet, it, it would appear, just look at where their eyes are facing and the, their body language has even considered yet the uh, Tomo and Narasaki spring up and left directly. If you don't touch the zone, you still get awarded it if you can top the boulder. So you, there's no need to, to go for it from a scoring point of view. Again, and now he's got the thumb a bit more solid. Like we saw with Adam Ondra, deep in concentration, not close to the jump that time. 
Mike Langley has just joined me back in the commentary box. Been, we were so curious about whether these start holds were touching and very frustrated as well because normally you get plenty of chance before every broadcast to look at all the boulders and yep. we didn't this time because the women's final overran. Are they touching? Apparently not. So, so that it. So that by, the, the I, central hold you're not allowed to touch until you've made a legal start. No, basically. exactly that. I stood right in front of the boulder. To me, they look like they're touching. I spoke to one of the officials. They said they are not touching. There's a gap of about a millimetre on the left-hand side. Adam Andre got told that he touched the non-legal starting hold. He accepted the decision. Judges say they are not touching. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating. It's slightly unnecessary. You could put the hold three mils away, <laughs> and then there's a clear gap. I'm not, never quite... Yeah, there we can see it. Well, apparently there's a gap between that hold there and the one above and left of it. Uh, I've got 20-20 vision, been very lucky, and um, I can't see the gap, but we're assured it's there. Uh, but as I say, it, it, slightly frustrating to, to have the potential for the problem in the first place. But we've at least resolved it, Mike. Thanks for legging it down uh, across the arena. Normally my job to do the live interviews is quite a long way, isn't it? Yeah, I am out of breath. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because I sat right next to the main judge and he said, uh, it's interesting, Anna Bondra got told straight away and he accepted it, which means uh, he's obviously not touching. There we are. On with the competition. Kokoro running out of time here. Yeah, he's not going to get this one done, Kokoro. He's already got the zone. Oh, he's got three seconds left. Maybe I'll take it all back. Ah, Kokoro will be a bit frustrated with that. That was brilliant, so close. Six or so thousand people in here all just jumped out of their seats at the same time. They heard the beeps and they heard Kokoro firing for the finish hole. Great moment, so close for him. If only he could have done that the minute before. That would have been the quickest ascent of an IFSC boulder in history, I think. <laughs> At least the team Japan can enjoy it. And uh, the DJ, who's uh, missed a few open goals this week, gets it absolutely spot on when he plays. Always look on the bright side of life as Kokoro Fuji uh, walks off. That's how it stands right now. Kokoro uh, getting himself in a bit of trouble here. Just a one top on the board so far. Here comes Jakob Schuber, yet to fall off the boulder on this Sunday afternoon in Innsbruck. Given the complexity and the delicacy of the movements on this ball, you'd have to say it might be the most impressive flash of all if you could do it. And yeah, no one's quite repeated Samoa's feats on this boulder. No mistake on the start. Goes up off the left foot rather than the right preferred right foot method. Looking for another flash here, Jakob. He really, really wants this, Jakob, and yeah, it looked to me uh, as if he was kind of questioning his method just before he launched, perhaps. Yeah, I think we've seen that with pretty much all of the athletes, really. Sort of just not quite sure if, whether they can just lean across or do they have to jump. Well, I think the thing is, you don't know what the holds are like. You don't know what the movement feels like. So as soon as you start moving, you start receiving information that you didn't have before, and you've got to process it and act on it midway through the move. So every time you do it, you learn that bit more, and that equips you better to make your decisions. But if Jakob was questioning his methods, it's understandable, because he's never done the move before. He doesn't know what it feels like. He doesn't know where his body naturally ends up going. That's one of the great things about bouldering because you can have multiple attempts at the same move. That time again, just going over the one hand. We've seen sort of the double stack method working. On each occasion, the boulder has been topped. Force going through the thumbs.
This is a replay of Jakob. Just got to bring that right hand in to stabilize on that far volume. Pulls on again. Less than half his time remaining. Oh, and he was close that time. Boulder's been top three times already. Kairada tomorrow now, Saki and Adam Ondra all got it done. Yeah, Jakob's going to do this, I think. You could see on that go, slapped his shorts as he came off. He knew that was possible. That was the same method as Ondra tapping the volume, the blue volume at the top with the right hand before doubling back down. Looks like he actually needs to be a little lower. Jakob is dropping quite a long way onto the hands. Is that your reading of it? Yeah, he's dropping really fast onto the hands, that's for sure. I think he's got the finger strength to hold that jump down, though. Here he goes again, 1.10 on the clock. Oh, he's getting close every time. Yeah, slightly different method that time. Didn't bother using the top of the volume. Like so he was saying he did go a lot slower that time. He asked for the brusher this time and brushes himself. Very rare you see uh, Jakob Schubert falling off a boulder because he couldn't hang on to something. Oh, it's desperate jumping to that one-handed crimp like that. needs this now, Jakob. Yeah, he does. He's, uh, he's at second place. Depending on the number of attempts, he could well overtake Adam on the provisional standings if he can top the ball. But Jakob Schubert, he'll make sure by getting that left foot nice and high. He's on the heel and he's on the top. Great work from Jakob Schubert, our Austrian co-commentators to the side have just ditched their table over. They're dancing around the arena. They love it when Jakob Schubert does well. Yeah, Killian Fischhuber commentating for uh, Austrian TV and from what we can see, abandoning any attempt at impartiality. His good friend and fellow Tyrolean Jakob Schubert. That's really ringing at home at number three. Right hand placement, although it's just a bit of a sloppy slap for the right hand to join the left hand, it does have to have a little bit of precision. He actually had his right hand quite far around the right hand side of that triangle. Just gave him a little bit of opposition with just a couple of fingers overlapping the left. You can see his heart was in his mouth on that on that boulder. That's how it stands right now. Jan Hoyer still to attempt this boulder, so he could definitely uh, move himself well up the order, could move himself, uh, depending on the number of attempts, possibly into third, going on to the last boulder. So, needs a top, that's for sure, Jan. Going on to his traditionally strongest discipline after winning the speed, he would have wanted to keep that momentum going. Might be maybe a bit too much to ask to win the bouldering as well, but certainly a, a top half finish would put him in a very strong position getting onto the lead wall. Opting to stand up off the left foot also like Jakob. The foot swap luckily is not too much of an issue. Slab's not traditionally his best of friends. Oh, that was close though. Dinos, however. Yeah, hanging at home on. Hanging on to pretty grim little holds, no problem. Very, uh, very definite slap with the right hand. So he'll try again now, uh, Jan. It, uh, looks like he can definitely do this boulder for sure. Seems like uh, it's pretty much done and dusted once you get over to the left. We haven't seen anyone drop it once they've got onto that hole to the left. Yeah, we've seen a lot of positive finish holds in this competition. Good opportunity to pump your fist and celebrate on a good hold. Not too many doubts on this finish move, like you say, though, Charlie. Oh, he was sure he was going to latch up, yeah, and he came at it really slowly. Maybe even too slowly. Looked like he slightly left his feet behind. Yeah, he's just ignoring that blue volume altogether at the moment with the little screw on it. Yeah, it's just getting in the way right now. Just jumping straight past it. Yeah, he thought he got it as well. There's Alex Megos in the cap. Margot Hayes next to him. Just 
just over half his time remaining, Jan. I'm surprised he tried a new method then, considering how close he looked on the last attempt. Yeah, he just tried to hit it and land it with the one hand there. Just tried to compress on the blue volume slightly. Yeah, I, th I, th I got the impression he kind of wished he hadn't tried that. By the time he actually stopped swinging, you could see here he was thinking, oh, that's not going to work, too late. But it certainly looks doable, this boulder, for sure, for Jan. If he can't get it done, by the way, he's going to be sixth going on to the last boulder. Yeah, that time he, uh, he released the thumb just back, and the thumb just popped just as he went to the jump, just putting him off slightly. Just needs to recompose himself a little bit here, yeah, no, he can definitely do this boulder. He looks more than comfortable going across. Just struggling a little bit all of a sudden to find the balance. Just got to continue to focus on the first move as well as the last. Now he finds a way. Figured it out bit by bit, Jan Hoyer, and finds the top. Really needed that one, Jan. He'll move up now into, I'm uh, just looking at the number of attempts. I think that'll put him up into fourth place going on to the last boulder. Uh, yeah, it is fourth place. Two top three zones. Same as Tomo Narasaki's got, ahead of Kai Harada, ahead of Kokora Fuji. Surely not coincidence that those two are beginning to struggle after their efforts in the last 24 hours. A bit touch and go there for a moment, Jan Hoyer. All of a sudden, he started struggling on the first moves. But he did always look strong enough to hold that position. So just breathing a sigh of relief. He knew there he wasn't going to drop it. So Jakob and Adam both got uh, three tops. German team enjoyed that one. Moving on to the next boulder then. Really interesting red boulder. Looking forward to seeing this one. A real puzzle. Yeah, it's it's one of those boulders where at first glance, uh, pretty much what, what we're getting right now, same as you guys at home, you uh, you think, Oh, okay, I don't know how to start this. You stop and you step back and you think, oh, okay, maybe, yeah, okay. And you begin to figure it out, but it certainly isn't left, right, fish, bash, bosh. It uh, takes a lot of thought, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see multiple methods on it. It goes up a series of red volumes and then the uh, traditional yellow top hole. A few replays here. This was Jakob Schubert. Wait for the explosion. Combined, by the way, that's not the bouldering, that's yeah, the combined as it stands. Jakob Schubert currently leading the way. If it finished like this uh, in the bouldering with him on top, he'd have two ranking points. That's Sol did in the women's. She won the speed, was second in the bouldering. There's uh, Jan Hoyer. There's not a lot of space behind this wall. It's quite a thin corridor. Uh, it's been our access for most of the week, so we've got to know it quite well, but it, it's a very small area. Let's have a look at this boulder now. Here we go then, with men's number four, starting all in red. Yellow zone hold, as always, is just on the side of this big diamond triangular-shaped hold. Finish holds up there on the far left. Quite a good crimp. As to the method, anyone's guess. I think they're heading upright, using his two cones for feet, a really awkward body position, really hard across the shoulders to get across. That's how hot it must be in the arena here. Just down to the shorts backstage. Yeah, Jakob uh, chatting away, I think in German there, so presumably chatting with Jan. 
That's uh, is that Kokora Fuji studying his fingertips. There is the uh, boulder more. We've already had the speed over on the right. Now we're on the boulder, and then we'll finish on the left with the lead. Here's Tomoa Narasaki. Uh, shown glimpses of the uh, Tomoa we knew and loved in 2016 without ever consistently performing like that. Tomoa asking for the boulder to be brushed before he even turns around. Telling him to get on with it as well. during the observation period he's noticed that the bowler is still pretty dirty. From the testing period for when the root set has created this. So there we can see the uh, start holds labelled with the yellow tape. It's one down and low, then two on the big uh, honeycomb over to the right, and then that tiny print for the left. So that's it tomorrow. Yeah, you've got to put your left foot there, uh, right foot there, and he's underway. Straight up to the zone, so flash of the zone for Tomoa. This is the technique I was just talking about there, and we described that as a guppy, the meat wrap, the hand wrap, whatever you want to call it. Really savage in the palms, really stretches the skin across the back of your hand as well. All in all, it's pretty painful, but Tomoa's absolutely cruising here. Samoa Narasaki in cruise control. And top in the boulder, so that's Samoa Narasaki. Three tops, four zones into the lead, but with the other five climbers still to come. Catch it as you like there for Samoa Narasaki. Didn't struggle with that. Hand wrap in any way, shape, or form. He's looking really good all of a sudden. He's come back to life after the first boulder. Boulder two, he was awesome. Boulder three across the slab, he was frankly ridiculous. And on this, time will tell how hard this boulder is, but at the moment, he made it look quite steady. Double wrapping in the palms of left hand, in the palm of the right hand, shuffling up on the right hand side, then lining up the one hand, a catch at the top. For these guys, that's no problem. Adam Ondra, opportunity to be the first climber with four tops in this combined bouldering. And keep his guessing with what he's going to bring out onto the stage after uh, gradually increasing his load. I thought he might uh, drag a trailer out with him this time, but as it is, he just brings the one shoe. He's obviously got a good memory of these boulders because he's made those decisions during the observation period as to what gear he's going to bring with him each time. It's, who... it's very confident, but it's almost a bit strange. I mean, it's not much more effort to bring two shoes out, is it, just in case? But uh, he's very confident in his decision-making, Adam. But if you're going to bring one shoe, you might as well bring two, surely. Either way. Well, remember, he has bowl, brought bowls of water out of him before. We'll go into that in a minute. Let's watch him on this boulder. Wrapping that first triangular zone volume. And here he goes lining it up. I think it could be about to be four tops from Adam Andre. Can almost reach ecstatically. Just gets up on his tiptoes and there it is. Oh, it's a pretty easy boulder this one for these guys. Adam Andre blows a little kiss to the crowd. He's had a great bouldering turn. Yeah, the, the worst he can finish uh, on the bouldering is third now, uh, Adam. Uh, excuse me, second. The worst he can do is second. Jakob Schubert could overtake Adam, but no one else can. So Adam is going to have a pretty good result from the boulder. He was fifth in the speed, which uh, realistically was uh, about what he was expecting. Perhaps he was slightly better. And uh, in the boulder, and things have gone pretty well. He's going to be at least second, Adam. Nice to see a boulder with, uh, being done 100% statically. It's one of those boulders where climbers of this caliber make it look relatively straightforward, but you know if you tried it yourself, it'd be absolutely the living end. Yeah, I think for most people, wrapping that right hand triangular volume where that zone hold is screwed onto would just be absolutely non-existent. Just the, the 
the grunt that they've got to be able to make these moves look easy. Yeah, the ability to crush that shape in between your hand, it's, it's actually a bit of a dark art holding a volume like that. Tyrana now, Boulder World Champion, currently in fifth place uh, in the bouldering in this combined final. Two tops for him and two zones. Uh, he will be well aware of what has just gone on in this bowl, you would imagine, and he would uh, expect to repeat the feat of Adam Andra and Samoa Narasaki. As that's what you say, Mike. Th these moves to the average punter down the wall are absolutely desperate. So much force through the hands, but made to look easy. Yeah, there is a slight technique of switching the hands as well. Up to Kai Harada, it's, uh, yeah. Bit of a piece of cake, really. That is one of the calmest tops I think I've ever seen at this level of climbing. Slightly disappointing men's number four here, really. Hard to say it, really. Groot has got such an incredibly difficult job, we say it time and time again, but it's a steady away this one. It's going to put them in a good position going into the lead, though. Adds an interesting element. Yeah, I mean, if everyone can flash it, obviously the standings remain as they were after Boulder 3. But uh, somebody might slip up. It's definitely possible, especially if the nerves start playing into it. Jan Hoyer coming out later on. If everyone flashes it, a lot of pressure on him. Kai Harada didn't look uh, too stressed at any stage there. Been glad of that, to be honest, after the 24 hours he's had. Uh, and there we see it standings right now with uh, Jakob Schubert, Jan Hoyer and Kora Fuji still to attend the boulder. So Jakob Schubert can uh, win this bouldering round of the combined final. Here's Kokora Fuji, a top here uh, would bump him up the order, but it would uh, be temporary. I think he's going to finish this bouldering in sixth, having seen how easily the climbers are doing this boulder. I don't think Kokora has really got an opportunity to move up here. He'll move up temporarily if he gets it done, but I'm pretty sure Jan Hoyer would then knock him back down into sixth. Just as Kokoro does put on to this, it does give us an opportunity to focus on a little bit of technique that is required. Like I say, it does look like you're just grabbing the holds and pulling on them, but just watch the hands when they go up that zone. Not the zone hold itself, but the volume that is screwed on. A lot of times you have it with your left hand in one direction, you move up and then you have to flip the hand completely around the other way to make it to work to move leftwards. Let's have a watch. It's initially wrapping it on the left-hand side. Doesn't need to flip it at all. Brings the right hand in easily that time. One word from you, Mike. Kokoro <laughs> uh, now lining it up. He's a tall climber. That hold won't look quite so far away for him as it might have done for Kai Arada. The result is the same, though. Kokora Fuji flashes it as well. Yeah, didn't need any of those hand sequences I was just about to elaborate on. Hands on hips, just walks off. Ends of his bouldering round. Not quite sure what to make of that one. No, a uh, bit of a, a, a disappointing finish, really, to the bouldering. We don't... Jakob and Jan still to come, but everyone else has flashed it. And you can see there, he just kept the hand facing over to the right, and sadly, the world has to live a little longer without Mike Langley geeking out on hand swaps. <laughs> How will we manage? You're a teeny so you're looking forward to that as well. Hopefully someone does it, you can geek out to your heart's content. So. Uh, Jakob Schubert and Jan Hoyer. The last two climbers to attempt this again. Jakob will be uh, well aware that it's only about two and a half minutes since the first climber went out to attempt this boulder, and now he's on the stage as the fifth climber. So uh, he knows it's been getting flashed. We saw this in the men's competition when it does come down to the in the semi-final that is the, the number of flashes the number of climbers doing the problems first go it does add an interesting element of sports psychology Yone Kruder mentioning no names to Mo Narasaki struggled with the pressure and didn't make it through but it may be an easier boulder but he's still got to get it done 
Still got a job to do. Yeah, that's it. If you're coming out onto the mat, it was easy for everyone else, but you're still stood at the bottom. You've still got to get it done. And you can see that big uh, move up, a lot of force going through the shoulder. And uh, Jakob now creeping his hand up, and again, not doing the hand swap, Mike. We're denied your explanation for another attempt. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that now, unfortunately. But Jakob has got a slightly different method here. He's dropped down to the left. Uh, is he going to launch from there? I mean, surely the, the logical things to do looks to be to put the right foot out. Uh, it doesn't matter how he does it, Jakob Schubert just can't stop topping the boulders today. That'll be him winning the bouldering round after second in the speed. Great show from Jakob Schubert, lead world champion taking it through to the league competition here in the Olympic combined. Destroying all four boulders, putting on a great show for the Austrian crowd. Every climber pretty much using the same technique apart from Jakob on that one, went all the way out to the left, paused for a while, but still had the required gas to get to the top hold. Uh, just to let you know already, tomorrow now Saki out of the running here for the overall. He's going to finish the bouldering in third. Uh, he was sixth in the speed, so uh, three times six is 18, and the worst score Jakob Schubert could get, having been second and first, is uh, 12. So Tomoa already out of the reckoning to be the combined world champion. I think a year or so ago when the Olympic combined was suggested, Tomoa Narasaki would have been one of the names up there as a firm favorite. But such as the training of some of these teams, a lot of people have caught up with him really quickly. Yeah, I mean, Sean McCall's won the last three combined uh, world championships, and this is not in any way to lessen that achievement, but he didn't have anything like the same number and caliber of climbers doing the combined. Uh, being doing well in the combined was a reward for doing the three disciplines, but you didn't have the Jan Hoyers, Jakob Schubert's, Tomoa Narasaki's of this world giving it everything they had in all three disciplines, and it's completely shifted the landscape. And, and that combined title, which wasn't perhaps as sought after as the individual ones in world championships, I think is going to become increasingly important. Here's Jan Hoyer, Mike, you might get your chance. He will flip that left hand, there we are. I was expecting more from the explanation, I have to be honest. Yeah, I've given up on it now. <laughs> Here he goes. The moment's passed. Yeah, and uh, tops the boulder, so six flashes from the six climbers on the final boulder. Cruised it, Jan Hoyer, as did everybody else. Probably one of the easiest boulders ever to feature this weekend, male or female. So fourth in the end for Jan Hoyer in the bouldering. Uh, fifth for Kai Harada. And uh, Kokoro down sixth. As I say, hard to believe it's a coincidence that those two are at the bottom having competed in the final uh, last night. You can see a number of people in the audience swiftly exiting before the lead to try and get themselves a quick beer, cup of tea, coffee, whatever it is that they need to keep themselves going. Very short break before we head into the lead competition. It's yeah. Jakob Schubert's to win at this stage. It is, yeah. The three Japanese climbers are already out of it. Uh, Jakob, these are all my uh, scribbled on the back of an envelope calculations, by the way. But Jakob Schubert, uh, first and second, gives him two ranking points in the overall. Uh, Adam, uh, fifth and a second, so he's on 10. Uh, Tomoa, as I mentioned, a third and a sixth, 18. So he can't catch uh, Jakob. Jan Hoyer, four and one, so he's got four ranking points. He can catch Jakob. Kai can and Kokoro can't. They've got 20 and 18 points respectively. And as I said, Jakob's maximum score is going to be 12. Six if he was sixth in the lead, which you must uh, say would seem reasonably unlikely, uh, multiplied by the two he already has. It's going to be a great fight going into oh, the yeah. lead. Don't go anywhere. 
Jan Hoyer, Jakob Schubert, and Adam Wondra going toe to toe on the lead route. I'll watch that any day of the week. <laughs> Jacob. On the boulder two, I think it was. For the uh, one or two. I'm already thinking about the lead. And there we see it. Jacob with two points. Jan Hoyer four. Adam Ondra ten. Uh, Tomoa, Kokoro, and Kai already out of it right now. So that's how it stands right now. We're going on to the lead wall. There is the bouldering wall in the middle of the arena. Lead wall over to the left. We've already seen the lead wall uh, in action for the women. They were climbing the right-hand route on the red holds. This time, we're over on the left for the men on the yellow volumes. It's a relatively similar style to the women's route. So you've got a, a little showy section low down, bit of a jump, and then just endurance. It's a case of who can hang on the longest. It's a traditional uh, lead route. We've already seen the climbers tested in bouldering. We want to see them now tested in lead. There's Jakob latching the top as he did on all four boulders. Adam Ondra also topped all four boulders. Jan Hoyer just missed out on the first one, but he got the rest done. That was Jakob. Raw emotion. Absolutely no doubt what he made of that one. That was an excellent boulder, that one there, number two. So it must have been the number one we saw earlier. There is Jan. Tomorrow Narasaki here topping the slab. When he looks good, he looks fantastic to Moa. That was uh, Adam again. There is the lead wall, and uh, just uh, looking who that is down. Look at it, it is uh, uh, Jakob Schubert. I'm assuming that the other five finalists are down there somewhere. I'm just staring at my screen. Yeah, I can see now the uh, reasonably unmistakable outline of Jan Hoyer next to him, Adam Ondra. So it's just Jakob up on the stage. I was thinking, what's going on? And why is, why is Jakob getting an extra chance to look at it? But they're all down there. They just they were just slightly hidden by the arena lights. the men's route then 44 moves to the top so just 40 moves in the women's women's route a touch too easy Trishy Pills and Yanya Garnbrett stopping that one spectacular move down low and all action crimped through the top half of the route
again, Jakob and Jan uh, comparing notes. I'm just, we've actually got a much better view uh, from our commentary position than uh, we do from the cameras. Kokoro and uh, Tomo are both there with the binoculars. Kai just off on his own, doing his own thing, studying the route. Same is true of Adam. Remember, they've got six minutes to look at this route. One uh, reasonably unusual feature of the route is that there is a compulsory position from which to clip one of the quick draws. Um, you have to clip all the quick draws in sequence, and there are rules around that. But actually, on this occasion, it's uh, so important that the route setters have put a cross of blue tape next to a hold and then a cross of blue tape next to a quick draw. And that means, according to the IFSC rules, that you must clip this quick draw from this hold. Yep, and they've done that because it would be too dangerous to progress through the next move, which is a jump out left without clipping that quick draw. Yeah, it's quite close to the ground and you could uh, for sure hit the ground uh, if you didn't have the quick draw clips and you fell off on the jump. So the root setters have actually installed something we don't see that often which is a compulsory point from which you have to clip. Yeah, on these sorts of routes, occasionally you do see it when the route all of a sudden snakes massively to one side and then sort of S's back round on top of itself. So the line of the quick draw still makes sense, but you do do a lot of climbing way off to the side of the quick draw. I said that, there's a high chance climbers won't fall off on that move. It is, is a bit of a spectacular jump and a bit of a spin on some pockets, but it's to the root setters anyway, it's not a particularly difficult section. You don't necessarily think they're going to lose any of the athletes in there. But it's got to be safe at the same time. I'd say, Charlie, I was observing this route in a very similar position to those guys earlier on today. And if I was one of them, I would be heading back a good three or four rows and taking a seat in one of those chairs. You get a much better view than you do from the front row. Yeah, the, the stage is actually quite small in Innsbruck. And when you're on the edge of the stage, you can see the top of the roof. You can't really make out any detail. It all looks a bit vague, so you, you've got to get uh, down and dirty. Well, it's a bit public viewing area. Yeah, kick someone off their seat. Sorry, mate. I'm Jan Hoyer. <laughs> out of the way. At the top of the roof, though, it is quite difficult to observe because you've got small yellow holes on top of small volumes. Really hard to determine the sequence from down on the ground, binoculars or not. That's one of the views we've got. There, side onto the wall. That was the women's route on the right-hand side earlier. Here yeah, we can see, again, uh, Jan and Jakob comparing notes to Moa and Kokoro, the same, Adam right now doing his own thing. Uh, Jakob, I think, might be uh, thinking about leaning over and asking Adam what he makes of the whole thing. They had a fierce battle in the lead, Adam and uh, Jakob. Both got a 36-plus in the final. It was count back to the previous round that won it for Jakob, but it was very, very close. Yeah, that's what makes this combined final so exciting, is because we get not only do we get a new competition, but we get an opportunity to see those two go at it Again, like we saw with Jesse and Yanya. This is another opportunity to see amazing talent on the wall. What an absolute privilege it is to be here and be able to film these climbers. Uh, Jakob Schubert there, really in the driving seat. Just two ranking points for him. He was first in the bouldering and second in the speed. And arguably, certainly judging by his performances in 2018, and uh, the fact he's won 18 lead World Cups. Jakob Schubert still with his strongest discipline to go. He can be caught though. Uh, both Adam and Jan could catch him. It would be pretty unlikely that uh, Adam would do it. Adam would have to be first and Jakob sixth in the lead. I mean, given how, what an amazing lead climber he is, you think that would almost have to certainly involve a, a slip getting started on the route. But we did see it from Jakob in the qualifiers. He slipped on uh, qualifying route one. Yeah, he said uh, on his social media it was the first time he'd ever slept in, uh, sl slipped in a lead competition. So it is possible, like you say. It is possible. See, it would seem very unlikely. Uh, if Jan Hoyer came first and uh, Jakob was second on the lead, then... Uh, Jan would actually take it. They'd both end up with four ranking points, but Jan would have been the better climber in two disciplines. He would have been better in speed and better in lead, and that would be enough to hand him it, even though they'd be tied on ranking points. But Jakob Schubert, for sure, the strong, strong favourite. 
Jan will be last out. So, uh, again, it will come down to the final climber because uh, even if Jakob tops the route, if Jan could top the route faster than him, he'd, uh, he'd take the win. in the arena here just been shown a replay of the fantastic paraclimbing finals if you didn't get a chance to see that live do go back IFC YouTube channel look out for the Innsbruck 2018 playlist so many fantastic moments great route setting in the power as well so many categories it went down to the final climber topping the final route yeah it was a real standout of the paraclimbing competition was the lead setting and Mike you and I went for dinner with the paraclimbers from Team GB after the conclusion of the paraclimbing and they were saying exactly the same thing and there you can see the uh, lead wall 54 degrees overhanging in that middle section tw uh, 12 meters wide 15 meters high and our route will go left and then snake around into the middle and then once it hits that fourth panel out of five it's pretty much straight up to the top so the red hold was the women's route. Ignore that now. We're on to the men's final. And it is absolutely in Jakob Schubert's hands. But remember, Jan Hoyer could just about take it off him. So it won't be absolutely nailed on until the last climber is finished. Once again, the script right is getting this one spot on. There's Jakob Schubert. Already won a world championship in his home city. Is he about to get that feeling again? He is very much the odds-on favourite right now. But a slip, a disaster, a really bad error, low down, and he could have op opened it right up. You were joking a little bit earlier, Charlie, but it's kind of true how much stuff you have to bring with you for the combined. Well, I said it for the women, yeah. You, 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 towel for your bouldering, uh, binoculars for the lead. You've got to bring a pretty big kit bag with you. Yeah, and just seeing how his skin's looking. And as I say, that's a small corridor behind the wall. That uh, area there is directly behind the boulder wall. It's right in the middle of the arena. It's a tiny little area. Trying to uh, listen in on uh, Jan and Jakob there. Didn't quite hear it. And there we uh, see it. Remember, the climbers are coming out in reverse order to their current ranking in the overall standing. So forget the bouldering, it's about the current overall ranking. So uh, Kai Harada will be the first climber out, followed by Kokoro Fuji, then Tomoe Narasaki. Those three Japanese climbers uh, no longer in the hunt for the win. Podium's still up for grabs, but the win is gone uh, for all of them. Team Japan are going to be slightly disappointed with that, to be honest, to see their guys coming out sixth, 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 fifth and fourth. Excuse me. Struggling now, to be honest with you. I'm going to get another coffee. And this is a close-up look in our 3D model of the lead route. Men will be on the left on those yellow holes. And there's the big hole at the top, powerful moves. There's the jump with a compulsory clip. And then uh, it's pretty much, once you get to about mid-height, once you start moving hard out to the right, it's just yarding on terrible little holes pretty much all the way to the top. Uh, I don't want to say no potential for a rest. It looks like there's no potential for a rest, but someone might be able to find something somewhere. Yeah, you're talking about no potential for rest. I can't even see any holes, to be honest with you. <laughs> so Kai Harada already had the best world championships of his young life. And anything he can find here will just be a bonus. Final element of this World Championships in Innsbruck gets underway then. Final six climbers we will see. And a big showdown to finish. Here is 
is uh, Kai Harada. Underway on the lead route. Currently got a ranking points total of 20 uh, because of uh, fourth and fifth. Fourth in the speed, fifth in the bouldering. Interesting, he's gone onto the right hand pocket there. That was on the women's route. You are allowed to use it, it is on the wall. I don't know if he's got his hands around the wrong way or he can just spin round that. He's read the route perfectly, no issues. So you can see the two crosses we mentioned earlier on. If you haven't watched lead climbing before, it's basically a competition of who can get to the highest hold. Uh, we provided a route map by the route setters beforehand, as are the judges, and you're scored according to which handhold you reach. The route, of course, theoretically getting trickier as it goes on. And Kai holds it, no problem. There's the uh, compulsory clip. As I say, the two bits of blue tape saying, this is a quick draw, you must clip from this hold. And, uh, Kai did that. Spectacular section coming up, a nice big cross move, campusing on the pockets. Big spin through. Yeah, it's quite a long way through, actually. Uh, there's got to get the shoulders pretty wide. And you get a bit of an insight into the uh, power level of the average IFSC athlete, the fact that Kai looked quite so relaxed through that section. Yeah. One arm pull up, followed by a campus move. That's just day to day stuff for these guys. Isolated on two fingers during the one armor as well. Yeah, I, I don't suppose this is something you could um, ever prove, but I can't believe anyone's ever done more competition moves in 24 hours than Kai Harada and Kokora Fuji have here in Innsbruck. And he's still going strong. I think that rest day tomorrow will feel pretty good. For now, though, business to attend to on the lead wall. Yeah, he's going to take a slight shake here as well. He'd be well advised to, because as you said, Mike, let alone rest, there don't really a piece of any holds after this, so he's going to be working hard from here on out. The angle does ease, but only slightly. Now he launches into the upper section. Plenty of time remaining. He won't struggle for time, it's energy that's the issue. Angle eases back a little bit for him here with these two volumes. Got a pretty decent ledge to stand on for his feet. Two hands together on the volume as well. You don't see that too often. An opportunity to switch back between them for different chalking up each hand. Let's choose to move on. Goes up with the left, makes it work. Route setters might be watching this slightly nervously. They felt this was a really hard route, but uh, given that Kai Arada is as tired as he is, he's making a very good dent in it, and we finally lose him pulling onto the head wall. Kai Arada can Nothing finally, yeah, he can finally relax now. His competition is over. Best week of his life. Good performance on the lead wall there. Yeah, really strong performance from Kai. He looks as you'd imagine he would look after the amount of climbing he's done in the past uh, few days, and specifically the last 24 hours. This is the jump lower down, just double to it, so it's sort of one-handed pocket. But wrap the top of your right hand. Yeah, the root setters are saying there's not much in it how you grab it with the right hand. As long as the left hand's solid and you get something out of the right, generally that's enough to keep you on. This is the point where the root really starts to kick in on this head wall. Small edges and a fierce shoulder move after that. They can see terrible right pinch. Fell way short of the left hand in the end. Here's Kokora Fuji, second Japanese climber on the wall, and he'll be followed by a third, Tomoe Narasaki. Yeah. 
six minutes will begin when he starts his attempt. Uh, he's had his individual observation time as well as his six minutes to study the route en masse with the other climbers. He's got to rocket through this lower section. Again, using that red pocket. Yeah, it seems like the most sensible option for getting that clip. No reason not to use it. And there you can see the compulsory uh, clipping position. I'm just entering the shot now, the compulsory clip. So there's the hole he's got to clip from. It's not that quick draw that he's about to clip that he has to do from there, by the way. It's the one above, so it's not that one. It's this one. There it is. It's two clips of the price of one there, Kokoro. Just will take a moment, making sure he makes no mistakes on the jump. Spectacular, but easy. Needs yeah. to get the clip before it goes through, though. Yeah, you'd have thought so. Now he's uh, realised that himself. You'd be climbing away from the quick draw. You'd be in a bit of a muddle getting back there, I'd imagine. He's onto that volcano now. Yeah, it'll pop up with the left hand, move out right, and then just motor for the top, get as many moves in as he can. Kokoro was uh, third in the speed, sixth in the bouldering. out towards the lip. This is the steepest section of the wall. Five big panels that make up the wall. That's where we saw Kai Harada on this next section. Just take a quick moment to chalk and to relax. He's got a really good heel hook at the moment. Can rest the different hands working through this section. Or will he choose to push on and campus? High energy way of doing that move. Hope that doesn't come back to hurt him too much. Finding this section first half of the route pretty cruisy. But we do know it kicks in. This is where another good rest is. Kokoro got a real fight in his hands, and as he stabs up with the right hand, we lose him. Lowers off, smiling. Wasn't uh, quite his day, but after the workload he had yesterday, it was slightly optimistic to think it would be. This was on the jump. This is when he'd already got the clip done. Nice close up of the hands coming together there. We're seeing this next spin move quite a lot these days in the lead competitions. Spectacular for the crowd. Just gets a final round of applause. Kokoro Fujia makes his way off the stage to Moen Narasaki. He's going to be the next climber out. There we can see it 34 plus for uh, Kai Harada and 30 plus for Kokora Fuji. Tomorrow we're out next. I think he's going to enjoy the bottom half of this route. Seems like a while ago now. Tomorrow, favourite on the speed. Wolbert had that false start. Sort of put me in a really bad position going into the bouldering. He did well on the boulders, but no chance he can win, unfortunately. Yeah, here's Tomoa. Got that great springy style. Don't expect him to hang around forever on this lead wall. He's not to have the Roman de Grange just hang on there. Brigade. He just uh, just keeps on motoring and see how I, how I get. Yeah. 
you see him bursting onto the wall. Yeah, he's, he's a sprinter rather than a kind of endurance specialist, really. Try and beat the pump to the top of the wall. Just a little bit confused about the big cross here. That's what we were saying about that red pocket. It can cause a little bit of confusion. Kuro looking a tiny bit confused with that move as well. In the end, it wasn't a problem. Sometimes moving that fast can cause that level of confusion, though. A lot of calculations to do really quickly. Gets through it with no issues, really, though. He's got to do the clip here, uh, to know. There we go. Five minutes left, one minute to gone. And Tomoa taking a bit of a break before launching out. No way he was going to drop that. Now, the only thing is, he's climbed away from the quick draw. Ah, he's got himself in a bit of a tangle here, Tomoa, not only in the road, but in terms of how he's going to clip that quick draw. Uh, I think he might be able to reach back around now if he's lucky. Yeah, I think he's caused himself a, a problem he didn't need, though. Uh, it makes it work in the end. Would have been lucky at a pretty unpleasant fall, actually, had it come off there, but it uh, didn't seem to occur to him at the time. Smell really floating through this section. That springy power Charlie was talking about. Probably won't bother resting much. We saw Kuro just canvassing this section, but then he did power out swiftly afterwards. Samoa keeping the heel on. Big cross under. Nice moves here on this route so far. Classic shapes. Tomoa getting uh, something of a rest. It's a spectacularly poor hole from which he's resting. Uh, it's a very more of a pause than a rest. There you can see where Kakora Fuji got to. Uh, Tomoa goes out there now and uh, holds on to it pretty easily. So he's going to climb himself into a provisional second place. That's where Kai Harada got the 34 plus. Samoa now heading up towards Kai's high point and not quite matching it. 34 plus for Kai Harada, depending on how the judges saw that one, I think it'll be a 34 or a 33 plus. B Lair just apologizes him. <laughs> just binned him a little bit there. <laughs> Bit of an unsympathetic pinning on the, uh, the stage. That was great to watch, though. John Narasak is always a pleasure to watch on the lead walls. The way he springs between the holds, you could see him a couple of times just thinking about the feet. Takes one look at the foot, decides just to jump to the next hold. Not on that move in particular, but just on a couple of the smaller holds, just keeps jumping, keeps moving. It's where he got the rope completely tangled around his back. Maybe that slight hesitation with the rope just caused him a little bit of endurance loss. I was talking about, he tried to use a right heel, decided it was not even worth the effort, and just camped up to the right hand. He's starting to look really pumped at this point. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, 34 for Tomoa, so it was felt that he, he got that whole 34. Oh, yeah, pretty uh, easy judgment. Now we see it again. Three minutes, 15 left of the clock. He was pulling onto the head wall. It's, uh, it's like a rat down a drain pipe to mower up that route. Two minutes 45 to get three quarters of the way up at World Championship lead route is pretty impressive. And as I say, not the most sympathetic landing he's ever had. Had an incident earlier this year where Janja Garnbrick clobbered the flowers at the front of the stage of the belay, didn't quite get their time right. I have to say the belayers on the whole do a pretty fabulous job because if you do get it wrong, no doubt you've made a mistake, and it's very, very rare we see even a minor incident like uh, Tomoa bumping down a bit harder than he might have expected. So, kudos to the volunteers who come and be late at the World Championships. And it's all Japan on the couches right now. Tomoa looks like he's barely got the strength to open the fridge, to be honest, after everything he's done. And there was a couple of nice Austrian vice beers in there, to be honest, after his, uh, his efforts over the last 10 days. Q 
huge moment next. Adam Andre is going to come out again to compete for us on the lead wall. Him and Jakob Schubert went toe to toe, fell off in the same position in, for the World Championships in the lead. Can he go one better today? Could, well, could we even see a top? Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of potentially winning the overall title, uh, just makes me a bit dizzy that shot. Uh, in terms of winning the overall title, all Adam can do is. Uh, come first in the lead and see where that leaves him. Uh, could still be overtaken uh, by Jan Hoyer, even if he tops the route and or Jakob Schubert. But as I say, if he, uh, if he wins uh, the lead portion of this combined final, then he's given him himself a chance. For now, I think this is our opportunity. Potentially won't get the win here, but just to enjoy Adam Andrew on a route. That's one of the great sights in climbing, yeah to list his achievements in the space of a six minute lead route is uh, basically impossible. He is an incredible climber, an icon of the sport. Came about as close to winning the lead world championships as you can come. He has previously won it anyway, two times in fact, 2014 and 2016. He's also won the bouldering. Yes. Uh, couldn't quite find it this time. Uh, not bothered at all by the jump. He's going to make sure he tries to get through this section without having any issues with the rope. Currently, as you say, it looked like he might have led across there with his left hand. That would have got him in all sorts of trouble. We'll go with the left hand. This could be interesting. He might be able to, because he's got a heel who can match that next hold. He does match it. Doesn't use the little jib on the right hand side. My mistake. Who am I to question Adam Mondra? Well, he's uh, climbing at uh, roughly Tamoa pace, if not slightly quicker so far, Adam. I don't know if he's got somewhere to be, but he looks like he wants to be done with this leader as fast as possible. He's actually rocketing up there, mind you. Could be quite sensible from him because if it came to time, it could make all the difference for him. I mean, he's traditionally a very fast climber. He is, yeah, but he's, by his standards, he's motoring here. Yeah, we thought there could have been an initial early scare there, but he'd obviously read the sequence different to the Japanese. He's firing through this route now, and this he will quite enjoy this next section. A little bit of a rest before getting into some heinous crimps. Goes straight up, bypasses the rest completely, and bypasses one of the hold. Doesn't even use hold 22, 23, I think it was. It's flying here, Adam Andra. Yeah, he's actually uh, a minute faster almost than Samoa at this stage. He's been training so hard for this Adam Andra. And all he can do is win the lead and see how Jakob Schubert and Jan Hoyer get on. Well, he's winning at the moment because that's easily a new high point. That's 38 for Adam. Gets a clip done move out towards 39. Total of 44 here. 40 hole is the last hole, that series of three volumes at the top. And Andre slapping out towards hold number 41. Needs to come back right now onto 42 and 43. There's 42. Crowd enjoying this, they know they're watching one of the great climbers of all time doing what he does best. So that's uh, 42 for Adam. Creeps and through on his way to hold number 43. That'll be a 42 plus, I think, for Adam. 42 or 42 plus, depending on how the judges saw it. Acknowledges the Olympia World crowd. After his disappointment in the bouldering semi-finals, it was so great to see him back on the stage. He did put on a good performance. The top move was a crazy drop knee cross through. I was really unsure how he was going to tackle it. Got into the deepest drop knee I've ever seen. A huge crossover. Just one move off the finishing jug. That was a great show from Adam Rondra. I think, gauging by his reaction when he came down, he feels like fair enough. I didn't possibly 
do as best I could today after the speed. Unfortunately, there's the big cross. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that's been highlighted, uh, and Adam Andre may have suspected this, but he'll now know, is that speed really matters. You can't come off the speed wall with that much work to do. So that's where it ended for Adam. He's been given a, a 42, uh, now a 42 plus, I have to say. I thought it was a little harsh not to give him the plus there. Now he has been given it 42 plus. Handshake for Kai Harada, handshake for Kokora Fuji, and handshake, I'm sure, for Tomoe Narasaki. And there it is, Adam Ondra. Here comes Jan Hoyer. Uh, he could actually win this competition with uh, third on the lead wall, but it would rely on uh, Jakob basically having a bit of a disaster. Yeah, we could be in the situation where Jakob Schubert from Innsbruck comes out in Innsbruck in front of his home crowd to win his second World Championship medal of the week. Sorry, he's out second for Jan. Apologies. It would be, uh, could be enough. I've got to say, if, uh, I mean, we, we know he is more of a boulder in the league climber, but if, if uh, he could find a massive performance here, it would leave him in a very strong position. I think we'd have to have the root climb of his life right here, Jan Hoyer. He, he's pretty funny uh, about root climbing, Jan. We've been round. Uh, the European Alps with him this summer for the lead World Cups and uh, whenever I chat to him he, he plays it down a little bit he's just a very good route climber but he always says oh I just try and climb as fast as I can I don't chalk up or anything he was quite he was uh, very proud of the fact that in Vilar the first lead World Cup of the season he only chalked up three times in the weekend well, I'm not surprised with technique like that because he just missed two of the holds out once again did it in the boulders missed out two of the holds this time he had his hands slightly wrong in the pockets below but no bother, just yard through. I think, to be honest, it quite suits him downplaying his leading ability. He's a much better lead climber than he'd have you believe, Jan Hoyer. You don't get to World Cup finals in lead without being pretty handy. But uh, he tries to play it down. He's got the jump now. He won't struggle with that. And uh, Clever climbing there. Gets his toe on, I think, just a clip. I think he'll release that before he now moves on. He's going to like this next section, I think. There's so much power. Looks like him and Andre have read the move in the same way, though. Not rolling around and camping. Putting left hand again into the pocket. Skips out another hole again, Hoyer. Skips out of the blue on the left hand side, and now he's just motoring through this top section. Again, setting a pretty fierce pace. It's only a minute and a half elapsed for Jan. absolutely giving this everything he's got now feet off again feet back on keeping the pace up here Adam Ondra um, Jan Hoyer excuse me really begins to fight we just saw a glimpse of his face and he was starting to look pretty pumped Jan Hoyer but that's a really good effort from him as I say don't let him tell you he's much much the lead climber no doubt he's uh, still stronger on the boulders. But his lead climbing and his speed climbing improving all the time. And with the Olympics looming, if you want to win the Olympics, you've got to beat him. And that is a pretty formidable challenge. Let's have a look at this top section. He sort of went from no pump to 100% pump in about three moves there, I think. I think As you would expect from a boulderer, really. Yeah, I think most climbers know how that feels. They'd be pleased to see that it happens to the best of them. Going for the big cross, was way too pumped, unfortunately, in the left arm. This is it then, Charlie. It is it, yeah, 26 uh, for Jan. So if uh, Jakob Schubert gets fifth place, he will have 10 ranking points, and Adam Ondra will win the lead, and he'll also have 10 ranking points, but Jakob will take the win because he was ahead of Adam in two disciplines and Adam was ahead of him in one. So fifth place will do it for Jakob Schubert. That's a 26 plus that we just saw from Jan Hoyer. Given his 
uh, abilities on the lead wall, Jakob Suber, given his pedigree, you would fancy him to uh, actually top the route. You'd certainly fancy him to at least match Jan Hoyer's performance. We but it. we could see a slip, we could see a big mistake, we could see the nerves get to him, and he just does some something completely inexplicable and completely misreads the route. But Jakob Schuber, you would imagine, is making his way out onto the interim stage. Odds on favourite to take another World Championship gold medal to add to his lead one from earlier in the week. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, how important this combined competition is to these athletes. And we said, try and tell Jakob Schubert and Jan Hoyer it's not important. Jakob Schubert is desperate to win this. And he has it in his hands, literally. Him and Adam Mondra went toe to toe in the league qualification earlier. Hitting the same point on the route. We saw it in the women's competition. What will we see from Jakob Schubert now? In front of his home crowd, can he become IFC Olympic combined overall winner? He was awesome on the bouldering. He was very good on the speed. What can he do on the lead? Yeah, I said it in relation to Adam Onra, but you can see what a good result for you does. Jakob Schubert's been on the front foot all day. He was second on the speed, and then you set him up nicely. You've just got a little less pressure. You have a bad day on the speed. Adam Onra didn't have a bad day. He was fifth, and he hasn't been training the speed much, but looking forward to the Olympics. If that happens and you get a bad result on the speed, you're putting yourself under big pressure. You've got so much ground to make up, whereas if you have a really good day on the speed, like Jakob did and take second place, your whole mindset changes. You're already out in front and you're looking over your shoulder at people trying to catch you. And that's a much easier position in which to find yourself. Well, Jakob Schubert now, he's just got to get through this nerve-wracking early section really cleanly and make no mistakes. Just having a look at the jump at the moment. Currently he's got his left foot quite low in the dish rather than on top of the blue hold there. This is actually a pretty big moment here because if Jakob doesn't get the jump done, Adam Onda is going to be the combined champion. And uh, Jakob, I think, was well aware of that. Looked slightly nervous before he went for it. He's read it the same way as Jan and Adam did. Yeah, you can see who was reading the routes together here. Japanese reading together. Three Europeans reading together. Does go slightly differently to that one, though. It does match. No issues in the end, because he's got such a good right heel in. Jakob's just got to measure his route perfectly here. So you can see there, Jan Hoyer, 26 plus. Uh, Jakob needs to get past that, move himself into fifth, and then from there on out, it is little more than a victory lap. A few more moves to go, though. He's actually really beginning to grimace. I uh, hope, perhaps, maybe it's uh, because of the occasion, I hope he isn't sort of over-climbing this, Jakob. Well, I think he's going to be massively tired from the bouldering round as well. One of the only two climbers to get four tops there. One of two to get four tops in the bouldering. He's going to be physically burnt here. This is where Jan Hoyer went. This is the key moment. Jakob Schubert crosses through onto hole 27 and with it secures at least fifth place in the lead and with it secures the overall combined world championship. Looked like he was slightly nervous lower on the route, and who can blame him looking at winning a second world championship in front of his home city? He may or may not know it, but either way, he's going to win this combined competition. He made it that bit easier for himself by going so well on the speed wall. Could we have the Hollywood ending to this 11 day? festival of climbing here in Innsbruck and have the local hero topping the final route to take home the gold. He's already going to take home the gold. Can he end the story on the perfect note? He's looking tired, Jakob Schubert slaps up with the left hand. We're not going to see a top, but we are going to see a Tyrolean crown combined world champion in front of his home crowd, Jakob Schubert. He's looked the favorite really from uh, midway through the bouldering when he looked so strong, and he's done it. Another Austrian gold medal here in Innsbruck. The crowd are on their feet, of course. It was a great show from Jakob Schubert, and you have to say, Charlie, his speed 
result set him up perfectly. His bouldering was actually phenomenal. He looked tired on the lead route, but classic Jakob Schubert, he always manages to drop into an extra gear as he looks tired. Pushed through that move where Jan Hoyer fell off around move 25, 26. Got it done and a fantastic result. Overall, I'd say he was the best competitor on the combined competition. Jakob yeah. Schubert, a very well-deserved gold medal. Yeah, fantastic in the speed, fantastic in the bouldering, and with his best discipline still to come, it always looked likely. Uh, Mike Langley, thank you so much for your company. Came straight from the air airport on Thursday to broadcast on Thursday evening. Now going straight back up to Munich to go home. Thank you very much for your company. And if you see Mike Langley in Munich Airport tonight, buy him a beer. I'm off down to the front to interview Jakob Schubert. See you guys. Fantastic to be here. Absolutely loved every minute of it. We'll just stick around just until we get up to the interview. Some fantastic scenes, really. Jakob Schubert, Adam Ondra, Jan Hoyer, the three Japanese. So much love between all of them. Andre was the best at the end of the day on the route. Slight redemption for going away with the silver medal against Jakob earlier on in the week. We've seen that with both Janja and with Adam now. Both silver medals this swap round did better in the lead in the combined. So Jakob, he started to look really pumped quite early on the route here, such as the fatigue for him. Really does have that ability to dig deep. All of a sudden, we've seen it so many times with his World Cup victories. He looks tired and all of a sudden just finds something extra. He always has that extra 15% the coaches are always looking for. This is where the elbows were really blown. Just still managed to get one more move. Talk about in training, just try and get one more move, one more move, one more move. Schubert always finds one more move, and in the end, hold 38, it's just too small for that level of pump, and he takes the victory. We said it would mean a lot to him, huge crowd here in Austria. We're always behind him from the very beginning, and for them to end the week with another victory for an Austrian. Home advantage really working for them here. You can see the final result on the men's lead competition. That's not the overall result. Adam Andre wins the leading with 42 plus. Very, very impressive show for him. I think he's got an Olympic future for sure if he continues to go down that path. And there is the final combined ranking. Jakob Schubert, top of the pack. Adam Andre close behind in second. And Jan Hoyer in third takes the bronze medal. Just four on the board. For Jakob Schubert, second in the speed was perfect for him. First in the bouldering. Very shortly, we're bringing you an interview with Jakob. Austrian TV jumped in there first. Have a little recap as to the combined competition. I've said one of the very first IFSC senior combined competitions, the Olympic combines, the big decision to go to the Olympics for 2020. Some great moments and a great competition. Lots of talking points all the way through, not just the combined, but lots of action all of this week. I think overall it was a great way to finish a fantastic week's climbing. The discussions will continue. They'll certainly start on a number of points, especially about the Olympics. Looking forward to catching up on all of that. World Championships again. Tokyo 2019 World Championships, then the big one, Tokyo 2020 for the Olympics.
Schubert was prolific today. Absolutely prolific. This men's bowler number four, easiest of the lot. Steady tour to finish for the men. Still had to get it done though. It Slightly different head game on the final boulder. We can cut down to the wall though. Charlie has the winner, Jakob Schubert. Jakob, a week ago we were here. You just won the lead world championship in front of your home crowd. Now you've won the combined. Is it just as special the second time round? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously winning the lead was like the most special thing ever. Uh, it was even a, a bigger crowd tonight. Everything was like maybe even a bit bigger. And it was like uh, my biggest dream winning the lead title uh, here in Innsbruck. But obviously, like, I mean, getting another gold medal is uh, yeah beyond unbelievable. Also, like just how this uh, combined competition went through the finals. Uh, just started really well. And then uh, bouldering went crazily good. And then, uh, yeah, before even the lead competition, which is obviously uh, my best discipline, I already knew. I don't have to uh, climb that far to, to get the gold medal. So, um, yeah, amazing to climb in front of uh, such a home crowd again and then get another title. Uh, crazy. And when you came out for the lead, you knew how well the speed had gone. You knew how well the bouldering had gone. Was it just a case of controlling your nerves and you knew it was almost there? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, obviously, uh, all the, all the combined climbers that made finals, they're really strong, but most of them are bouldering special, specialists. So, um, I mean, I've been on the World Cup with them a lot of times, and I know if, if I can, like, uh, get my best climbing, I have a good shot of beating some of them, and I knew I didn't have to beat all of them to, to gain the gold medal. So I knew I just had to, like, yeah, don't do any mistake, mistakes, uh, climb safe, and uh, then I should secure that title. You did secure it. Congratulations. Two-time world champion in your home city. Thank you so much, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thanks. Fantastic pictures, great highlights, so many great angles, great footage. It's always fascinating to see some of these moves back in slow motion. That was the end of Samoa's competition. Flower ceremony and closing ceremony still to come here in Innsbruck. insight as to what the future holds for this Olympic combined. Some of the athletes to watch out for straight away are here on display tonight. Press gathered down the far right hand end of the hall then for the final interviews, the final bit of action here in Innsbruck. Charlie, you've been here from the very beginning, an epic week of climbing. Yeah, an epic 11 days. I mean, we got started, I think it was either last Wednesday or Thursday. I mean, uh, long since lost, lost track of the days. It's just been fantastic. It's, I find, find myself skipping into the venue every day because the action's been excellent. It's just been a wonderful uh, celebration of our sport. And because the Olympics is coming up, we've got another World Championships next year. The World Championships will now be on the odd years. So it's going to be 19, 21, 23 and so on. So we've got another one next year in um, Pachioji. But uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. Wonderful uh, celebration of the sport. And reflecting back on the combined, this is, like we said, this is one of the first combines that we've actually covered. We did the youth. World Championships last year, but this is one of the senior, one of the big senior events. 
and uh, opinion on the Olympic combined? I think it was fascinating. Um, we, we haven't had enough of them by any means to really make a judgment uh, on the advanced tactics that people will use. Uh, we're not entirely sure how people will approach it. One thing that's very clear, I think, is that you have to be very, very strong in two disciplines, which, uh, just because they're relatively similar to each other, will almost certainly be lead and bolder. And then you need to be pretty strong in the speed as well. You, you are inevitably, in a three-discipline event, going to have one uh, that you're not as good at. That's inevitable. If you watch a uh, decathlon, heptathlon, whatever, you're always going to have a weaker discipline, but you need to make that weakness as small as possible because we saw today uh, Adam Ondra, he was uh, first in the lead, second in the bouldering, and still didn't secure the title because of the speed. And if you leave the speed wall with a lot of work to do, you're really going to struggle to make it up. Well, and what we saw with Jakob doing really well on the speed, it gave himself a huge amount of breathing room on the final lead route. Yeah, and, a, and a, that's a key point because your whole psychology changes. Adam Ondra comes off the speed wall thinking, I've got to deliver here. First boulder starts going not very well, and you're thinking to yourself, oh no, oh no. Whereas Jakob, he comes onto the bouldering, he can think, yeah, I don't really like this first boulder. Oh, well, if I get it done, I get it done. And if not, well, hey, you know, I'm already in a good position, so it changes everything. And uh, I think you asked me what we've learned. I really think we've learned that speed is very very important you can't have it can't be a glaring weakness and whoever comes off the speed wall in fifth and sixth place may have ended their olympic dream almost be before it gets underway when we get to tokyo in 2020 yeah i think by the time we do get to tokyo in 2020 athletes going to be much more matched on these disciplines as well i think they're really going to dedicate themselves to it now they've seen that the format works they've seen a few of the ins and outs of what it's going to take so people like andre are going to be stepping it up a bit Poy is going to be looking into his lead a bit more. Schubert's just going to carry on doing what he's doing. Yeah, Jakob Schubert uh, would be well advised to just do whatever it is. It's got him this far because it seems to be working. Focusing back on the women's podium though, Jessie Pills there. Third place, fantastic result again for her here. What a week she's had. That's, uh, yeah, Solsa. Yeah, it was an amazing performance from Solsa. Uh, was quite open about the fact she was just delighted to be uh, in the final. The problem for her, if you like, was that she was hunting down Yanya Garnbreth on a lead wall, and uh, many have tried and not many have succeeded in that task, but still a silver medal, an absolutely fabulous achievement for her. And here is a somewhat indifferent Yanya Garnbreth, I think, getting ready to be presented. Interesting elements of doing the live interviews, and you heard Jakob say it. I mean, one thing that's great about interviewing Jakob is you're not going to get any PR speak. He can tell you exactly what he thinks. He said, well, I believe that more, actually. Um, quite interesting that I think all the climbers perhaps viewed this as a test. Let's just see what it's like. Uh, I, think, I think the IFC saw a bit of a test as well. I think so, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it was a very successful test. But I think you can see that uh, it was a lovely way to finish the World Championships. But I think both Yanya and Jakob were happier with their gold medals in the individual disciplines. Yeah, could you say the same in 2020 if there was a big champion? So, there's not going to be a world championships, but if there were, win a world championships or an Olympic gold medal. I think I'll take the Olympics any day of the week, but it's still two years away in the world championship. Until we get to the Olympics remains the biggest prize in climbing. It will be the biggest prize in climbing until the summer of 2020. I think that's a great summary. And it will be eclipsed there, but until then it is still the biggest prize. And to win one of the individual disciplines remains the biggest of all. But uh, there is Yanya, combined champion. I mean, I think most people have got her down as a pretty strong favorite in Tokyo already two years out. But I mentioned earlier, what we've learned is you've got to be good on the speed. She left herself a lot to do. Luckily, she's Yanya Garnbrett, so she can afford to leave herself a lot to do. But if you leave yourself a lot to do, and uh, I will resume in a second after the Slovenian national anthem.
There is Jan Garnbrecht. Apologies for talking over the first few bars of the anthem. On all the flower ceremonies we've had here in the Olympia world, we haven't had anthems. So I was caught slightly off guard by the uh, Slovenian national anthem, which having watched Jan Garnbrecht for a few years with, I'm uh, incredibly familiar. Know every every note and every bar. And uh, it's another time she hears it, and she is a combined world champion of 2018. My question for you, Charlie, would be, can Yanni Garbrick keep up this level of performance? She's young, she's winning everything, she's clearly the best climber. Can she keep it up? Well, there's a couple of things that happen. Injuries happen. Uh, Molly Thompson-Smith, Great Britain's leading female lead climber, suffered a horrific finger injury. Uh, was it at the end of last year? She had surgery at the start of this year. I don't remember exactly when the injury was, but either way, injuries happen. Um, the Slove the uh, famous Slovenian mountaineer who I've now uh, teed up, Thomas Humar, excuse me, had a, a bit of a brain fart. Thomas Humar, the famous Slovenian mountaineer, uh, fell into his cellar and broke both his legs. Things happen. So uh, an injury uh, happens. I, I think other than injury, really only a loss of motivation. Uh, could see Yanya toppled. I think um, she, she's just too good. If the motivation is there to train, and she's always saying, I never struggle to be motivated. I get out of bed every day and I want to train. I don't even like taking rest days. Uh, if she can keep that up, I, I think she's, I don't want to say unstoppable, but as close to unstoppable as you can be two years out from the Olympics. I wonder now if the coaches will analyze this and start to reduce the number of competitions that she enters. The schedule, Just from for a wear and tear point yeah, of view. The schedule is insane if you want to do all of the bouldering, all of the leading. She certainly won't be doing all of the speed, she'll just be training that. But it is a hectic schedule, it's a lot of travelling, takes a lot out of your body. I wonder if now we'll start to see athletes just reducing the number of competitions they're doing and starting to focus on some of the really big important ones. Yeah, I think uh, Yanya will do a full lead and boulder season next year. That's the plan as far as I know and every time I've asked her about it. But uh, whether she then does that the year after the, the Olympic year, I'd be a bit more doubtful. I would imagine that she'll, she'll go pretty hard on the competitions next year, get all that experience and all that mileage in and then might just try and be a little smarter in 2020 with how she manages her workload. But it's worth remembering, Mike, Come the Olympics, she'll still only be 21. We're talking about workload on a body. It's different when you get to your late 30s, uh, your late 20s, and you've been doing this a long time. Yeah, and you've still not been at that at this game that long. And, um, but I do, I do agree that she will over the next 18 months, perhaps just begin to change her schedule slightly. Good to see Adam Andre back on a podium. Same with Jan Hoyer. There's Jan Hoyer, a lot of people expecting big things of him in Tokyo. And he had a pretty good day here in the Olympic combined. Bronze for him. Again, as I said, it's in no way to uh, criticize the competition. I think it's been fabulous entertainment, very interesting and, and posed as many questions as it's provided answers for us. But. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, the climbers were using this as a, a test just to see how it went, really. And Jan Oil looked pretty happy with his uh, bronze medal. Talk about Yanya Garbrit being only 21, was it? She will be in Tokyo. Yeah, 21 when she reached Tokyo. Jakob Schubert, though, you touch on the older side competing for a long time. Can he keep it up? Yeah, he's 28 now, Jakob, so he'll be 30. It'll, it'll be a, age will be a factor as Adam Ondra. Second place for him. If he can just get that speed of climbing a little bit quicker, he's going to take some stop in the Olympics. Yeah, I agree. Um, Jakob will be 30. There's Hannah Schubert, sister of Jakob, an immensely strong IFSC competitor herself made the finals of the Women's League World Championship last weekend. But yeah, Jakob, he'll be 30. That does make a difference. Um, the thing is, he just seems to get stronger. Yeah. He's been winning medals as far back as I can remember in the IFSC. Ja Jakob's one of those guys who's just there. You look at a walk at podium, and there's Jakob. He's just been doing it that long. 
Uh, and I can't see any reason he wouldn't stop doing it if motivation was to wane, as we mentioned with Yanya. The thought of the Olympics now being less than two years away is surely enough to get you out of bed in the morning. Yeah, absolutely agree. It's just a whole new incentive. This will certainly help. Jakob Zuberg combined world champion in his home city. Of course, of course he's been dreaming of this moment, being crowned world champion in Innsbruck. But twice in a week? Don't be greedy, my word. So, Jan Hoyer, Adam Ondra and Jakob Schubert. Some podium, that. It's funny how in competitions, the uh, momentum comes and goes with certain climbers and people rear up, but somehow the cream always seems to rise to the top, and I think that podium speaks volumes. It does, and it means a lot to these guys. They are on the railroad now to Tokyo 2020, surely. So now we'll hear the Austrian national anthem in commemoration of Jakob Schubert winning the combined world championship. Jakob Schubert, world champion in the lead, world champion in the combined. What a world championship it's been for him. Just incredible. As I say, Hannah there down the front. OK, Mike, this festival of climbing is about to conclude. Thank you so much for your company and uh, Hey, bring on Hachiyoji next year. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure being here. An honour to be in Innsbruck. Fantastic World Championships. See you at the next one. Yes, yeah, see you at the next one. Thank you guys for watching.